Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we have a very special, special, special guest. Mr. Dave Swift is with us. How are you? Doing well. Doing well? Can't complain. Hey, you look good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Of course. I, like, I like that shirt. Yeah, ready to deliver. Yeah, <laughs> you're you ready to deliver. <laughs> Everybody hates Pepsi, but fuck. I think it, yeah, there's Pepsi and <laughs> there's Coke like, people, you know. I was I, a Coke people. Were I'm, you? I'm, yeah. Now you're Pepsi. I was Cokes and Smokes. Now you're Pepsi and cigars <laughs> or what, what's going on? <laughs> Whoever pays the bills, you know? <laughs> There you go. Pepsi wants me to deliver, I'm on it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> What was it? Oh, it was a Coke spot. I'm thinking of, you know, that flat rail out there. It's right in front of the Coke place. Where's the, oh, up in the valley? Yeah. I don't like Norwalk. Norwalk. Oh, mm. oh the yeah. red, the red, red one? rail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huh. I'm Coke. from San Diego. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pass these things by. And Oceanside. Ah, yeah. Mm. Uh, yes. Yeah. Did you grow up in Oceanside or I, are you? I grew up in San Diego in North County. So okay. inland. Yeah. You know, so Rancho Bernardo was the town. And then did you just start, uh, you started skating out there, obviously. We noticed you have some trophies here that you graciously <laughs> brought, <laughs> brought to us. One was a... Uh, showing off. Second half, second half winner. That's right. The first third, half Third winner, place. I killed him. You can <laughs> <laughs> Did his legs in. Yeah. And then I got second half, so. Was know, this a... Oh, oh big, perfect. Castle contest. That was the first year of Castle, actually. So eighty two. Oh, wow. wow. Eighty two is the first year Damn. of Castle. I did not realize. I didn't that. know that either. Huh. So my first year of skating contest was nineteen eighty one, and that was ASPO, which was Association of Skate Parks. Bah, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. So there was, you know, all these skate parks, and like as a kid, you just wanted to go to these skate parks that you saw in the magazine. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to Whittier, I'm going to Upland, and and this and Del this skating contest. Yeah. But you get there. There's 90 other people skating in this country. You're like, fuck, really? I don't know what I do, you know? And, but it was fun because I, I got to meet a lot of rad people and got to skate these parks. The next year, there was only three parks. That's it. So it went from 12 or 14 parks to three, which was Whoa. Del Mar, Whittier, and Upland, I think. We're talking about 82 to 83? Or 81 to 82. 81 to 82. Yeah, so that was like the big crash of like skateboarding. Why, right? why did they take down all the parks? Um, insurance, mm. law, you know, they weren't really making money. I, I don't know. It was just like a weird time. Putting up mini malls? <laughs> they were in mini malls for the most part. You oh, know? Wow. I mean, they took up a lot of space. The one, I mean, I don't know if you ever saw pictures of the one that was down the street here in Marina. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I went to that once. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my parents actually took me to that contest. And like, I wouldn't let my parents go in the contest. How old were you? 15 you say nope you're not coming they, in. yeah they, they came up they, they, they pulled up the and i'm like lot. yeah you guys can't come in and they're like <laughs> all right all right david what are we gonna do <laughs> and they ended up going down to the airport and at the end of the runway and just watch planes come in while oh that's cool. in this contest <laughs> i see people down there still yeah watching, watching planes yeah yeah they made the best of it yeah. how'd you do at that contest uh i did good in the slalom like a bank slalom oh. but in the pool it was like I had never ridden that pool before. I mean, it was like you'd go to these places and, and you had never even ridden it, and like you're like, oh, fuck. Wow. You know, it's different. You know, like yeah. it's like, how do I ride this pool? It's not Del Mar, you know? And that was kind of the thing. Like, right. you were used to your park and you'd do good there. And if you could do good at all of them, which over the years I started doing better at that. You mm, know? Okay. And you so developed a kind of a ability to. Adapt to the other everything. Parks. Yeah. Right, right. So there wasn't like a street section, it was just like slalom and then. Uh, and then vert or bowl or something or what was it the events that they had at different you know and they were different they would always have two events so that one was bowl and bank slalom okay but then they also did freestyle uh regular slalom like just you know tight cone slalom yeah. and downhill no street hmm. crazy How about freestyle? Is pre street <laughs> i am pre street <laughs> <laughs> Freestyle? Any freestyle stuff I going on? I did do freestyle. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, it wasn't like what I did, but you know. And well, here's a here's a cool little story about a street contest or a freestyle contest in 1982. Um, it was at Magic Mountain, and I didn't have a ride, and I wanted you know keep my points up so I can get the second half winner. Got to get the second. Maybe <laughs> um, you could have gone first half winner. <laughs> so I rode a bus. You know, I was 16. I took a bus from Escondido, you know, to downtown la mm. wow and downtown la to magic mountain damn and i was so sick like i 
this is the worst sore throat I've ever had in my life. And I was like, fuck, I got to do this. And I met some friends there, and they let me stay in their motorhome. Did the contest. I mean, I was horrible at freestyle, but did it, got the points. The next day, you know, when I got home, I went to the, I was so sick. I went to the doctor. I had mono. Mm. Oh, fuck. And the doctor's like, what were you doing this weekend? And I was like, oh, it was an skateboard contest. And they're like, you could have died. Oh. And I'm like, what do you mean I could have died? Like, if you touched your, your spleen when you have mono, is oh. is totally, like, filled, like, it's, like, swollen. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's super sensitive to you. So if you bash it, mm. oh, oh wow. you know, and, I mean, you'll live for a little while. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you won't know. Really but, yeah. It's like, oh, well, I got this weird stomach ache. I actually have a friend that had it happen to him at a backyard pool, and they drove from Apple Valley to Oceanside before they knew. You know, and he, he was just starting to fade out, and like, oh, we better take this dude to the, it was, you know, the hospital. And he went, and they, yeah, you ruptured spleen. You need to wow. find him. Oh, he was in the my. hospital for like three days. Damn. Ooh. Yeah. Ouch. But how did yeah, how'd you do in the contest? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I skated it. I did like two runs. Got its points. Went, yeah. Uh, t went on some roller coasters. Okay. And uh, so you actually got to have the a little day at the park too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who who was good at slalom back then? Everybody was kind of good at everything. Yeah. I mean, like Jeff Grosso could do slalom. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you probably would never expect it, but like yeah. Steve because, Olson. Oh, he ripped at bank yeah. slalom. Like yeah. he was like the king of bank slalom. Um, but I think you know all the people that were with me that you would know, like Eric Nash. Um, Jeff, mm -hmm. Tony, I think was yeah. in the, that. It was concert. just something that you guys did. Yeah, we had. Yeah, we had to. You had to. Part of it, right? And so when you're trying to get all these points, it's just for like the biggest, con the bigger contest down the road. Like you get qualified to enter the bigger. I never did Castle. I never was into the contest scene. Mm -hmm. Not that I was skating back in the '80s, but you know they had them in the '90s they, they too. Still have so, it now, yeah, I think. Exactly. There you go. I know. I th it was kind of to get sponsored like uh, yeah. like so i was in i think does that say 1a or 2a it doesn't it just says california amateur skateboard league second half winner uh, those <laughs> are third place oh so but that would have been 2a i think so that was okay. like two under sponsored you know like there was 2a 3a mm. and then factory sponsored okay. um so i was just hoping to be able to get to the point where i could get free stuff that's it. Yeah. yeah, free stuff. Right. Did you ever get to I that still, point? I'm, yeah, I'm working on still it. Still trying. <laughs> no, I did. I, <laughs> you did. You did. I had several suitors. <laughs> Schmidt Sticks was my, Schmidt Sticks. my big sponsor. Yes. Back then, what, what year was that at Schmidt Sticks? 84. 84. How, what's, what are you getting from Schmidt Sticks back then if you're flowed? <sighs> the sickest shit. So, yeah. <laughs> um, one box probably in two months because he was in, still in tampa when mm. i got sponsored mm -hmm. i really wanted to ride for sims but marty jimenez the jinx he was like i think i can get you on schmidt sticks i don't know about sims i was like, oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is what is schmidt sticks yeah. and he's like oh they're from florida and okay i'll check it out and uh paul schmidt they had just come out to california to i think they're starting to deal with brad at vision gotcha but it hadn't happened yet and so i met him at the pipeline He's like, yeah, you're gonna be, you'll be stoked. Paul's kind of weird, but like, you'll be, it'll be good. <laughs> so I see him and met him in the pro shop, and he's like, <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? What? Is he passed out? He's pretty much, and he's holding the big stick, like when, you know, you know the ice cream, the big stick, oh, the rainbow thing, the rainbow big so stick. He's got, he's got braces, and he's just like uh, kind of drooling. <laughs> Is this shit dripping down his? And I'm like, Marty, what's wrong with him? He's like, oh, he just got knocked out. So he had just not, you know, fallen at the combi. Oh, oh. so he's like eyes spinning and marty's like hey this is dave swift blah blah blah. he wants to get sponsored what do you think and then you're like oh. yeah all right and that's how that, I was that was it i got sponsored by a guy that had just been concussed <laughs> so, with a with big, big stick. stick yeah with a big stick long story short that lasted for another six years. Six <laughs> years. Out. Okay. Oh, and what are you, are you getting anything you want? Or is they just sending you a couple boards? A couple or? boards a month. Rails. Some rails, yeah. Um, when they got the vision, it was there was more. So that, then it became <laughs> mm -hmm. wheels, saw blades. So we had wheels. Uh -huh. And then just the association with vision, like I could get vision shoes. Mm. You know, because that was at a time when Vans, there was no other shoe companies, I don't think. Vans wasn't really involved in skateboarding. They were... People wore vans, but they weren't sponsoring people at that time. Right. Yeah, Vision Streetwear was in it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Vision and Airwalk, like right after that, yeah. was like the yep. big deal. Hmm. Um, Definitely. Do you think Vision was like the first like <clears throat> skater 
Skateboard shoes? Well, Vans was the first skateboard shoes, I, I, I guess. guess. Yeah. I mean, however you want to look at it. But Vision what came out of this thing where they saw this need, like skaters wear shoes, like they're not getting anything from, because everybody that rode for Vision was complaining about, I can't get any shoes. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. And so I guess Brad was like, I know a shoe guy. Hmm. And, you know, they just kind of basically made a Adidas superstar t- toe yeah. and a Vans sole. That shit was a good shoe. I had those shoes. Yeah? Yeah. Definitely. Huh. The high top one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Vision Streetwear suede. Super sick. Lasted forever. Mm-hmm. Took forever to work in. I love it. Crazy. I love it. I yeah. love it. That was the time. But this is like, you said that lasted six years. Yeah. Are you shooting photos in there? I mean, you... Negative. Nothing. <laughs> I shot this photo. Okay. That's... So, uh, that's in Palmdale. Mm-hmm. So that's the Great Desert Ramp Contest. So that was in January of 93. 93. Okay. Or 83. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like, I was like, wow. Fast forward. Like I started skating in 91. <laughs> yeah, it looks close. Um, <laughs> and that one is Tony Hawk. Mm. So I was in junior college. I just started junior college. I graduated in 1982. Junior college, I took a photo class. Because from my perspective of skateboarding, like when I was growing up, I would look at magazines and just be like, hey, you know, looking at photos sure. for hours at the grocery store or wherever they had a magazine. So I was really into it. Like, it's just something that for, I don't know if I didn't really realize it, but like I was really into skateboard photography. Okay. Like I, no other photography. I didn't care about hmm. Home ever gardens, before until I, about, until I saw yeah. skateboard magazines. So that's, you know, five years into skateboarding for me. I go to this contest and I have a camera cause I'm in this photo class hmm. and the photo class really sucked. Like it was like, Take a picture of a horse, you know, like all the rules that you're like, mm, this is boring. Fuck this. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Um, but I kind of learned how to use chemicals and do the darkroom stuff and roll film and you know the, the essentials. But I went to that contest. I had one roll of film. And I shot all these photos. You know that roll of film, uh-huh. 24 f- exposures. Is that Tony in the photo? Yeah. Yeah, Tony. I tried to. F- I have this photo of St- of Caballero that I use as like. Oh, this is the first photo I ever shot, you know, and it it's predates other photos that I shot by six or seven years. Okay. But it's an actually good photo from me on the side of Caballero doing a, a fakey thruster over the channel. I just couldn't find it today, so I brought that one. So that was just you as a spectator yeah. just shooting some photos and black and whites. And the amount of spectators at that contest was probably twenty. Okay. Wow. And it was like the big pro contest. There was twenty people there. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And there was probably nine professional skateboarders in the contest. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So t- including the skateboarders, yeah. 20 people. Well, 20 plus nine, 29 20, people. 29. Plus the industry. Yeah. I'm, I'm counting the industry as also spectators. Yeah, oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. And that contest was on HBO. Wow. What? Yeah. Is that a trip? What yeah. the hell? HBO started. When did HBO start? It's like Around, early, near that, that time. time. You know, yeah. it wasn't like a It was around a like 84, thing. I think, yeah. so possibly. I didn't even realize that HBO had these contests I didn't know that either. Holy shit. on their network. They, I mean, that was the only one. And the only yeah. one pretty much ever. And I didn't even really think about that until, you know, the Tony Hawk documentary that sure. just came out. So the main picture that they show everybody on their marketing is mm-hmm. a photo of Tony at this contest mm-hmm. that Neil Blender shot. And somebody commented on it about like, oh, I remember when that was on HBO. And I was like, holy shit, I totally remember the film crew there filming. Like with big camera, you know, the whole thing, like hood over the head. And they're like filming this thing. Like, wow, these guys. And I never saw the event on HBO. I'm sure you could search it. Yeah, Yeah, I wonder. Um, And and then they never did anything with skateboarding ever again. So they probably saw like, oh, there's only 20 people here. (laughs) (laughs) How many people are going to watch this? Who gives a shit? And it was the second backyard ramp contest in professional skateboarding. Hmm. Joe Lopes contest was the first. And then that was the second one. And so were you just started? So that was 83, you said. And then were you, but you said you weren't taking photos for the next six years. No, because I, Soon after that, I worked at Vaughn's Grocery. Oh, I love We were just talking about Vaughn's changed yeah. into, or no, yeah. Safeway turned turn into Vaughn's. They just kind of, it, yeah, everybody, <laughs> CVS, Savon. Yeah. My parents made me work. They made me have insurance. Mm-hmm. If I was, if you're going to continue skateboarding, you need to have insurance. Uh, all right, where do I get that? And then I had a friend that worked at Vaughn's. He's like, oh, we're in the union and we got all this good stuff. 
So for four thirty an hour, I worked at Vons minimal. You know, I would work twenty hours a week just okay. so, I, and the rest of the time I would skate. And I, what was I saying about the? Why were we on a Vons? Well, it was just about the um, filming. I'm uh, taking oh. photos for the next six years, and you're right. just working. And the other thing I had to do if I was going to live at my parents' house after high school, I had to go to school. Okay. At least part time. Sounds about standard yeah. issue yeah. for parents. Yeah. yeah. Probably not anymore. Kids just sit around and smoke weed all uh, day. Well, play. things are changing. <laughs> <laughs> but so I would, you know, be at work, and I had my camera in the car when I was working. Okay. And I think somebody, I left it unlocked, and somebody grabbed the bag, and oh. damn, I guess I'm not shooting photos anymore. Drop that class real quick. I mean, for four twenty an hour, you're not buying a new camera no, anytime you're soon. Not buying mm-hmm. nothing. Uh, things were expensive back then. I feel like it was. Yeah. I mean, not comparably to what they are now. You know, I bought a $5,000 camera recently. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, damn. That one was probably only... I mean, you think it's all relative to the time. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah. so I didn't... Yeah, I didn't... You weren't shooting? Like, no. No. And then what made you pick up a, a camera again? Was it... Did the Schmidt stick thing wear off after six years? and Or what, what happened? Uh, never wore off. So oh, still okay. wore still off. Yeah. Wore off. I was gonna Paul, say, Paul, send me board. I was gonna say earlier, like we all know Paul Schmidt now. Like I wish I could know this Paul Schmidt with the big stick oh. and braces. <laughs> he was amazing. Like man. I wish I could know that guy. That's so red. I mean, I don't. I'm not good. You can't throw him under the bus. But like he was a totally different looking dude. Like and you were like, whoa, this is the kind of Ophi dude that are high our high school. But like he's a mad scientist yeah. and like yeah, he's really into what he's doing and. What? He, He's really into yeah. what he's doing. Even yeah. back then, yeah, like he was doing it shows in his garage or at his mom's house or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you know, he's sending me these boards that nobody out here knew about. You know, it was like a new thing. We knew about the rails, Schmidt Six Rails, but the boards were who's Monty Nolder? Like, what? What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, it was like a really good board. It was fo- it had foam in it. Like he had invented this. Uh, Way to cut out the inside of the board and inject it with foam so it was a lot lighter and still strong. And you know, I wouldn't, you know, I could call him up and be like, Hey, Paul, can I get some boards? Oh, I don't have any wood. (laughs) There would always be something like where it might take two or three months to get a board. Oh, wow. wow. But we're moving out there, you know, because he had done the deal with Schmidt or with Mm. Vision, but it was just like taking too long. And I was like, Oh, man, it sucks. And then finally, when it happened, you know, it was golden. Like yeah. I, I, you know, like it was part of that whole vision thing. You know, mm. like you had Sims Vision, Town and Country, and Schmidt Sticks. It's like know? a whole package, yeah. Yeah. package deal. That's how they did yeah. it before. Like that, and obviously that happened again with like the whole world and everything right. under its un- umbrella. You know, as we move into the '90s. Right. And like mm-hmm. I remember going to, you know, I finally get to go to Vision, and like, you know, you go in this fucking warehouse, and there's just skateboards everywhere, like boxes and shirts and. Wow. Kid in a candy yeah, store. Yeah. 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 And I wasn't even a kid. I was probably 19, Paul made the best boards back then, too. Yes. He invented the kind of the round railed boards. Mm. Um, the He was the first guy to do the dyed veneers. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like before that, it was all dips and or just wood boards, you know? Yeah. Like, right. He's a visionary. That's crazy. Yeah. He's a visionary. Yeah, that's I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. I mean, he's in, he's injecting foam into a board and hollowing it out like that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it kind of came, I think, from boat manufacturing. He, that's right. He yeah. was. He did do boat oh, manufacturing. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. big big stick eating. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine if you can imagine him. Somebody just put it got the vision when you explained it. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. I like, see that. Yeah, just, <laughs> This is my. This is the guy that owns the company. I'm gonna ride for. <laughs> yes. Can I get a picture? You know, I mean, if, <laughs> mom, look who I ride yeah. for. Yeah, what? I knew skateboarding was going nowhere. <laughs> you better keep that job at Vons. Oh, they told me that for years. Yeah, yeah. Hey, at least you had insurance, though. Yeah. Oh, no, and, and it, uh, I'm gonna tell you, it paid off. I mean, I my my union dues were probably fifteen dollars a month. Mm-hmm. You know, which covered my insurance and everything. And July on July fifth. 1985 um after the cheap trick concert at the del mar fair <laughs> i was skating so it was like 10 o'clock at night and i broke my ankle like Ooh. sat like basically sat on my ankle to where it Oof. turned all the way to the oh, side okay. yeah. which also coordinates with dan sturt if, if you want to know yes oh, wow. so i'm on the bottom of the pool the keyhole at del mar foot sideways and then all of a sudden I'm getting picked up by some long haired red hot chili pepper looking dude <laughs> with spandex shorts on carrying me into the pro shop. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And it was Dan Sturt. And I'm like, wow. 
I don't even know you, but thanks. You know, and he dropped me on the pool table. And I'm sitting there with my legs sideways. Oh, my and, gosh, dude. You know, a friend, that, two, my friend and my girlfriend took me to the hospital, which wasn't far. And basically, I rolled into this hospital. My insurance, I'm in the blah, blah, blah. You know, they, next thing you know, I'm getting hit, shot up with Demerol, and the guy's pulling my foot and doing this. And I didn't wake up to the next day. But I paid zero dollars right. for ankle surgery. Wow. You know, in 1985. Wow. You know. Oh, yeah. Wait, they just put it in place while you were awake, or did they knock you out? I'd, I'd, they'd already shot me up with Demerol, so I'm in kind of a waiting area before surgery. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, okay. And I just remember the doctor, like, kind of walking up to me, like, hey, I'm Dr. So-and-so, and you're David, right? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure am. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, you're looking down this gurney, <clears throat> leg sideways, and the guy goes, he's just kind of touching my foot, and he's like, oh, what are you? And he goes, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I just... That's oh funny. I just God. started laughing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to small talk you, yeah. just distract yeah. you, yeah. and just, oh, well, but yeah. there we go. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, I'm just getting wheeled down, the lights. So they had, you had surgery. Yeah. You had, uh, wow. sur you had uh, surgery, but like you stuff? were just, yeah. Three screws. Three screws? Yeah. How did that affect your skating? Um, I w It just made, <laughs> I was just scared. Like, that was the first <laughs> bone I ever broke, you know? So right. it took probably a year before I became confident with skateboarding yeah. again, but... Yeah. Four months out of surgery, I started skating again, and then the next year, I like was one of my best years of skating. You know? Yeah, but I wore an air cast. You ever heard of those? Yeah, for like four years, I wore the thing. Like, wow. I didn't need it anymore, but I was like, oh, it's my safety thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, see, that's an air cast. That's what they say though. Is like now your leg is dependent on that. It's not growing right. The muscles and the ligaments mm, are right. not forming as a normal. Yeah, look at Tony Hawk. Like. That is like what how you do it. Yeah, I mean, as far as like he's dropping in and doing like, oh, as far as his recovery. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. I mean, it's yeah, a, and it was insane. a femur, right? Unbelievably That's quick. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. amazing. Like he was never in a cast. He no, was just straight to surgery. Boom, boom. Walking. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like, back at it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Skateboarders are resilient. We're, yeah. we're resilient. You know, That's right. Thumbs if up. If you go hard in the paint trying to trying to recover, yeah, you're gonna. I mean. Not all the time you're going to be successful, but I feel like back then too, time. recovery was different than it is now. Different right way. back yeah, then, it was like smoking weed, drinking beers, and kicking it. That's, you know, that's the '90s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so what was the '80s like? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sweating. <laughs> I mean, I, all I could think I would I was at the skate park every single fucking day after the summer of 1985. Okay. Sitting on a chair, just watching watching people skate, like right. and just like, when can I do this again? But you're not mm -hmm. like re cut. You're not like rehabbing it, and like today no, people. Like, would yeah, be I didn't do. I did zero physical right. therapy. So like nobody goes. Watching. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after I got the cast off, it was like, see you later. Yeah. Well, uh, here's an air cast, and that was like that was physical therapy. You that know? was it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've only had maybe like recently had a few injuries, mm -hmm. like in the last three years. So since you know 1985 till 19 or 2012, I hadn't had any injuries other than concussions. Okay, no big deal. No, <laughs> no, no, no big. Those are fun, yeah. but you yeah, know I mean, like broken bones or sure. anything. And in 2012, I ruptured my quad tendon. Hmm. How do you do that? Just fell real hard, like knee sliding. Okay, being old. You know, Your like, quad tendon's in, in front, yeah, or is it like in the side? Top of the knee that holds the. All your upper muscles on your mm -hmm. leg to okay. your knee. Got you. I had no idea what it, it was. Just something. What was that? Did I break my leg? Like, it just felt. It was a weird feeling. Like it just. And I didn't know. And I went to a doctor. And like again, insurance. You got to get referrals. All this shit has to happen before you can actually go see somebody that knows anything. You need a specialist. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's just a sprained knee. You'll be good. And off I go for two weeks. You know, like every time I'd walk downstairs, I'd fall. Oh. Wow. You know, because it was like those muscles weren't, you know, they couldn't handle it. Going upstairs, it was fine because it was all your hamstring. Mm, but going yeah. down, it's oh, all man, your quad, quads are doing. And finally, you know, it took like three weeks. I got I got to go see the doctor again. He's like, just give it another week. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I can't. Like, it's, I can't it's not working. Like, yeah. Yeah. something's wrong with yeah. this thing, you know? Like, and so then I got referred. And the, 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 the orthopedic surgeon, he just kind of like did this with his hand across my, where my knee was. He's like, oh, you have a ruptured quad tendon. We have to get you in surgery, like, tomorrow. Wow. Damn, dude. You know your well, body I mean, the I'm best. I've been kicking and hollering. You can't yeah. even, like, get it done, like, no. you know. And I'm paying 
four or five hundred dollars a month in insurance. Dude, Nobody, how crazy yeah. is that? Yeah. It's like, oh, you'll be fine in a week. Actually, never mind. You need to get surgery tomorrow. Right. Like, that's... well, two different doctors. Like that guy's yeah. like knows what he's talking about. The my uh, primary. Primary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's Something just like, like I don't know. Yeah. It's he just a... smiles. Yeah. Just smiles. <laughs> but going back to, I mean, we're talking about Vaughn's and the. Mm-hmm. It was just. You know, it was, I was super glad that I had that because. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine doing that and then paying out of pocket or you just do the runner like all right you know make up a name and i'm out of here damn i mean to a skateboarder growing up i it's insurance especially nowadays it just doesn't make sense to us you know you're paying all this money in case shit happens and then for everything but yeah but then once it happens like thank god yeah you know because that's it that'll put you in another tax bracket for sure um even when you have insurance it's still expensive yeah. Like just, uh, what is it? The deductible? The deductible and stuff like that? Depends like $5,000, 5, $6,000. Yeah. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. what I had for this. Yeah. I, uh, I pay the first 6000 Right. <laughs> you got to reach a certain point yeah. and then, then oh, you help thanks. me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, then yeah. you help. <laughs> All those hundreds of dollars I've yeah. been paying you. Thousands yeah. of dollars. Nah. I'm in the middle of a divorce and I got to pay the doctor too? Oh, shit. shit. Oh, man. And I got to get a yeah. fucking dental. Dental work is the worst. We can, yeah, we can complain about this. But that, that insurance cheap. Is it? Yeah, I think it's cheaper. I mean, than, yeah. I mean, it's like twenty bucks a month oh, versus like a for me six hundred dollars yeah. a month for mm-hmm. medical coverage. Right. Don't get old. Oh, that's cheap. We're compared to what, I'm paying, what I'm paying for my family, I'm like, bro, we're paying oh, seventeen fifty. We're paying seventeen fifty for insurance. Like that's three just, people. Three people. Yeah. But still, I know. I know that. <laughs> I don't, I'm not arguing. <laughs> <laughs> you, your yeah. wife, and a, and a kid. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, I, I would remember, like, you know, at work, because when we did the, doing the skateboard mag, you know, we had a small business, like, as far as employees, but we had mm-hmm. insurance. And, you know, I wasn't paying hardly anything. But Grant, uh, he was getting these bills, and they were, like, $1,700 a month. And I'm like, what the fuck? Because, he's, you know, he's 10 years older than me. So oh, just yeah. as you as you age in, I think right. he, he starts well, going up and sure. up and up. For and sure. it's just like, dude, uh, I don't know. It's a whole thing. Yeah, it, it, I don't really, like it at all. It's a whole thing. So you're still sponsored by Schmidt Sticks, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, mm-hmm. and then I haven't uh, got boards in years though. <laughs> from you just go down there and make a board yeah. with them. You, I have done them. that. Well, I've done it too. It's amazing. And he, that's that why I was saying process. his energy is so. Like I was done within the like at three hours. I was like, <laughs> dude, I'm 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 ready to take a nap. I'm going home, and he was already starting to make another board. Like, come on. Let's yeah. go. Then we're going to skate later. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Well, he like that board right back there, the the, the Brimley. Brimley, yeah. That was those were made for me on my 50th birthday. Love that. Um those are Schmidt boards. He he did the the work on those. Talented. Yeah. Dude, talented. Great dude. I mean, Definitely. he's brought so much to skateboarding. It's oh, yeah. phenomenal. It's insane. Um so then you but then you have, but you ultimately started working for Transworld at a certain point coming right, up so in these last six years. Not these let, last six years. Let me go back years, to just like the, the Del Mar thing. So yeah. Del Mar closed in 1987, July of 87. Okay, 87. Everything's yanked out from like, where do we skate? Like, you mm-hmm. know, everybody that we knew, like went all these different places, like, or just weren't around anymore. Like the people that you would skate with every day, gone. There wasn't cell phones. It was just like. Skating what? was vanished. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. You know, you could maybe get a ramp session, but you had to call somebody and figure, like, oh, is anybody going to be there? So for like a year, I was like lost. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm mm-hmm. really lost. You know, I had my, I worked at Vaughn's. I started working for Mike McGill at his skate shop. So I was doing two jobs. Mm-hmm. There was, you know, some skating ramps here and there, but I went to Europe in the summer of 88. Like, had a duffel bag full of skateboards and stickers and a couple of my friends, and we went there because this is something we would want to do for forever. Went to Europe, and I was like convinced that once I got back, it was like I'm either going to San Francisco State to go to college, or fuck, I don't know, get a construction job or do something else. You know, I wasn't skateboarding was kind of not looking like it was something that I could keep going right. and doing. You know, um, so I came, you know, had fun in Europe. It was great. Sold stickers and stuff. Paid everything for almost three months. You know, being over there. Okay. Skated contest, did all that, came back, and you know the first thing my parents were saying, "So now what are you doing?" I'm like, "Uh, I don't know." Well, you're gonna have to move out and this and that, and I was like, "Fuck, really? Shit." You were right. eighteen. Yeah, and so I'm still working for McGill. I got a, I quit, had quit the job at Vons, and 
had McGill's job and I got a job at a coffee shop. From there, I met this guy, Mike Yusufer, mm -hmm. who well, I'd actually, you know, he was four years younger than me, but he was like kind of one of the, he just moved down from San Jose and he was a, a really good skater and he was really high energy. Like, I mean, dude was like, when are we skating? Blah, blah, blah. We're going. McGill's skate park had opened. Okay. So there was a park that we could go to. It was just dealing with McGill and, you know, the pain and mm -hmm. doing whatever. I was still sponsored by Schmidt Sticks, so I could trade stuff to skate. But I had to work. But this guy's constantly on me. Come skate with me. Blah, blah, blah. You know, him and this guy, Mike Persenko. And so I'm, I started skating with them. And it became like I started learning stuff. And it was like I kind of got reinvigorated in the skate world. I was like, I'm not ready to quit. I'm not ready to go to college. I'm not ready to do this. The guy, there was a person that worked in the dark room at Transworld that was like, hey, I'm quitting next week. You should come down and see if you can get a job at Transworld. Hmm. It's out of I'm nowhere. Like, yeah. And it was an Oceanside. Okay. I'm like, let's see. Well, maybe. Hmm. Why not? I'll be, so I, I had a friend that wrote me a resume, you know, just fudged all this shit on there. Like, <laughs> Writes this and, you know, he's going to school for journalism, this and that. And like. Total, yeah, bull work. Yeah. Total yeah. Bull bullshit. Total bullshit. Yeah. And it was at a time where you could just walk into a place and like, hey, do you have any applications? And yeah. They're like, yeah, here's one. Fill it out. And filled it out. Handed it all in. Not expecting to get called back. Like, whatever. You know, this ain't going to happen. I'm at McGill's shop and I get a call from somebody like, hey, can you come in for an interview tomorrow? And I'm like, ooh. Wow. Really? All right. So I go in there. I meet this guy, Carl West. Like, so, and he was the editor of the magazine. And I'm like, all right, I guess I interviewed good because the next day he called me back and he was like, yeah, I'm going to hire you. You know, Grant said that you're a troublemaker, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Grant Britton, I'm going to hire you anyways. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, real? Why is Grant Britton saying you're a troublemaker? Well, because Grant was the manager of the skate park at Del Mar. Mm, okay. And I was a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so like I was the it. kid that would sneak in. I was the kid that would get in fights. I was the kid that. It was loud, obnoxious, whatever. I was just like that fucking skate kid that was going twenty four seven. Like, you know, I'm. A, what's he doing over there? I mean, I worked there at Del Mar for a year. I got fired twice in two days. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you got fired. You came up. I didn't show up for work one day, uh -huh. and the manager was a friend of mine. And, he, and I didn't show up, and he's like, "I gotta fire you." And I'm like, "Dude, no! I need this job. I gotta have this job. I love this job." And he's like, "No, I gotta fire you." I'm like, no, come on, Chip, don't fire me. So he didn't fire me. Okay. The very next day, I'm closing. You know, I was like at 11 o'clock at night, I close the park, but I leave the lights on. I invited a couple of my friends to come over. Let's skate without pads. Let's just skate around without pads. <laughs> in comes Chip in his car. Chip. At 11:30 at night, gets out of the car. Swift. <laughs> what? He's like, I got a call from Wayne that some people are skating after hours without pads. You're fired. Oh, my gosh. And so I got fired twice in two days. <laughs> and, you know, Grant knows about these things. So these are kind of the troublemaking things that I would do. So Grant had concerns. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. that. It's a funny story, and I don't blame him for it. But back then, I was like, you know what? I'm going to prove that I'm not a troublemaker anymore. Or, you know, you're, you're going to love me, Grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we became best of friends. That's right. That's, that's right. So you got hired. Did you get hired as with the darkroom position? Got, or did you get something? I got hired as a writer. As a... My actual title was assistant editor. Assistant editor, okay. And I had never touched a computer in my <laughs> life. Wow. And so, so that was January 2nd I got hired. January 4th was my first day. All the staff went to the NSA Pro Finals in Dayton, Ohio. The first day I was there. So I met them, and then they were gone. Okay. Then I got handed three 60-minute tapes of, Eric Dress, of an Eric Dressen interview. Oh, Trans audio, audio tapes. Yes, yeah, transcribe these. Okay. And so this lady was like, uh, that's other editorial assistant. I was like, hey, what's, what, do I, how do I, what do I do? <laughs> okay, come here. And so she showed me, like, this is a transcribing machine. You press this button. You put these headphones on. You, you tape, go back and forth with your foot. You know, you're like, listen to it. And then you type in. I'm like, okay, so how do I turn on the computer? <laughs> <laughs> was the, and she's like. Are you kidding me? No. I'm like, yeah, I have no idea what I'm, what I'm doing. I just skateboard. So a transcribing machine has pedals and it controls the forward, forward and backwards. backwards. Yeah. And then you're just typing in what they say. word by word what they say. Yeah. By the Sounds daunting. No, it was gnarly. It was five days doing oh. that. 
I mean, listen, it's rad to listen to Eric Dressen yeah. interview, I mean, especially was, back then. It was but. pretty monotone. Him and Gary Davis, you heard of Gary Davis? Oh, yeah. Uh, Gary yeah. Yeah. Davis? TSC, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. he was the interviewee. I mean, he's really kind of, you know, monotone. Okay. It's like, you can be like, fuck, what's he saying? What's... And he also had his own language. So you're trying to decipher mm. this language that he's talking, like, what? Toothpaste do you use, or you know, it's just weird stuff that he would say, and I don't. Oh, did he really say toothpaste? Okay. <laughs> All right, and but I it was word for word, and it was fucking like a hundred pages, you know, wow. on, a, on a file. Did it? I was pretty fast at typing after that. Like I could, you got it down yeah. within that process. Yeah. So that was your first one, was Eric Dressen. Eric Dressen, Eric Dressen interview. Eric wow. Dressen was also the first cover I shot. Really? Wow. Two years later. Two years later, Damn. what was the cover? Just an ollie at Fallad Parking in Denmark. Oh, I think I have, a, I have it here somewhere. It oh, we have it here. Quarter pipe, huh? That had just been built, like, or it was an asphalt quarter pipe. So you went on tour in Europe two years. Mm -hmm. Were you were you going on tours before that too? Um, well, I mean, I guess we got to rewind. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That process of doing the interview and being in the office, like nonstop, you know, and I'm still having Mike Usefer call me on the phone, like, can you come skate at three? I'm like, dude, I got, I'm here fucking stuck with this fucking interview. I got <laughs> this job. Um, you know, so I'm still getting off. So I'm trying to figure out ways to escape. You know, this is within two months of working there. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, how do I escape being in the office? There's a magazine right there. Oh, he signed it too. Look at that. We know Eric Dressen. I hope so. <laughs> Good dude, by the way. A great dude. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so I'm, I, you know, I need to find an escape because I, to me at 21 years old, like that wasn't skateboarding. And if I looked around, there wasn't skateboarders working there. Gotcha. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, they were people that knew about skateboarding or wanted, you know, that guy, Carl West was definitely not a skateboarder and he was my boss and not, you know, I just wanted to be out there with skateboarding. And the people I saw that were able to do that were the photographers. Yep. Like, fuck, I want to do that. And most of those photographers at that time, a few years older than me, they weren't really into skateboarding. You could tell they were into, you know, working for Powell or, you know, getting getting those easy jobs. I was like, fuck, I want those easy jobs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I want to be able to do that. But I also want to keep this job. I, I had the foresight to know that, like, getting paid a salary and mm -hmm. being in the office as opposed to just getting a buyout check right. was important. So if I could make it so I was writing stuff and shooting photos mm. and editing articles and, you know, kind of doing the whole magazine thing. Sure. I'm golden. You know, I figured that out within three or four months. Okay. And so I went up to Grant and I was like, hey, do you have an extra camera I could, you know, by this time he likes me. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, can I borrow one of those cameras? And he's like, hmm, you can have this one, which is the one that's here. Mm-hmm. Um, and off I went, you know, and I was, I really only had my, the stuff I knew about photography from when I had the class, which wasn't much. And now I'm trying to shoot with a flash. Uh, I'm trying to shoot professional skateboarders close up with a fish eye. And so I would just ask him questions, you know, I would just every day, Grant, what, do I, what about this? What about this? And, you know, I, and you know, when I first came back with um, a proof sheet, which is like a black and white sheet with a whole roll of film on it. And I was like, excited these are so good i love these are the best photos ever you know like every photographer says about his first role i'm so good <laughs> check me out these should be in a magazine and grant looks at it and he goes hmm, maybe if they were you know he's like this is straight and he goes what? are they look good like this and i did what do you what what does that mean like my horizons were totally tilted like uh, oh so i'm just shooting like this way or whichever way you know i had no idea of and there's not rules in photography, but like you kind of there's basics that you kind of need to follow. Got right? you, yeah. You can't get too crazy, yeah, right. Unless you're Dan Sturt, then you can get as crazy as you want. Yes. <laughs> so yes. experimental, right? So that was you know probably April of 1989. Okay. So that's you know, January '89 hired. April started shooting photos. July. First photo in a magazine, which was. Um, it's here somewhere, the black and white guy in a pipe. Did he have, does he have a top hat on too with a pipe? No, he was Scottish. Oh. <laughs> he could have been speaking. His name was Chimp, or they called him Chimp. And this is actually a photo I shot. 
again, it doesn't even equate because it was shot on somebody else's camera when I was in Europe the year before. Mm. And somebody turned it in as their own photo. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> so I'm editing this article and I see this photo and I'm like, that's my shot, that photo. That's crazy. And, there, and the dude, I don't want to bring up the name, but the okay. dude was like, no, it's not. And I'm, yeah, it is. And we, we, we fought like back and forth. And I'm like, this is fucking my photo. No way. And sure enough, it was my photo. Um, so that was the first photo I got printed. But the first photo that I got printed. With your name on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I actually shot within my working at Transworld okay. was a photo of Steve Caballero at the Kennedy Warehouse in San Jose. Like doing a frontside board side. Wow. And it was like in the gossip section. It was, you know, just big. Okay. Okay. But believe me, I was pretty stoked. I mean, I Caballero. For, oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And then so July, I also go on my first United States tour. Me. Mike Usefer and my friend Owen Nieder. Mm -hmm. And this is, I mean, like tours back then, like if you went, just went out on a trip, it was just like you got together with a couple of people and you just fucking went. Like, we didn't know where you're going. Uh, we're going to go to Indiana, Nebraska, you know, all these places. Sure. But when we get there, what do we do? Who do we call? We were, where? You're you just, just show up at a there. place. Yeah. yeah. Like if there was a ramp, you showed up at the ramp and hopefully, you know, people let you skate it. Or it was at a park or, you know, whatever. We had no real solid plan other than just to fucking drive to New York and then back to California. Gotcha. No schedule. Uh, no. 30 days. We had 30 days out of gas card per diem. Quick question. Um, those guys, were they sponsored? Yeah, Mike was, like, probably the top Vert Pro okay, at the time. Okay, yep, yep. Like, there, there's, you know, West Coast. He was the top West Coast guy. Okay. Owen was a friend. Owen Eater, I grew up with Owen, and like so, me and him were the troublemakers at Del Mar. Like, that, sorry, Owen. <laughs> I know you're grown up now, but like, we were the troublemakers. So there was a purpose behind this. It wasn't just yeah. a homie trip. There was, was like you're traveling with one of the best dudes. Yeah, and yeah, and that, that's what kind of got me the ability to go do it. Was because, oh yeah, I'm picking Mike Usifer. Okay, like, okay. And it was just, I mean, the only person I had to answer to was Carl West, and he had no idea, and Grant. You know, and Grant was like, yeah. And then by this time, again, Grant had, had, was seeing that I was actually into making a magazine, you know. And that was, that's Grant's biggest thing. Like, he's always been into making a magazine. Right. Like, like that was his thing. Like, not that he, he was a skateboarder, really. He was, but he was into photography. He was into making a great magazine. He was into the process. Mm -hmm. And he could see that I was into the process. You know, there, there was not really anybody else there was into the process. The art director at the time, Gary, was. But nobody could speak to Gary because he was on, on another planet. Okay. <laughs> but that was the crew. So I had, you know, Grant, I can do this. And he talked to the boss and like, I got per diem. Per diem. Gas card. Wow. My car. And we started in San Jose and just drove straight across. The first stop from San Jose was Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> Stayed there for a day and then went to Omaha, Nebraska the next day. And there was a ramp at a park called Eat Concrete. And Mike Usefer was kind of known before he was a vert skater as like a street guy. Mm -hmm. Like he could do 360s off jump ramp bigger than anybody. Like he was just that guy. And so there was like a handrail thing, like, you know, one of those wooden, shitty, old street course things where it was yeah. just two pipes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. about this tall. <laughs> the PVC pipe. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were metal, I think. But yeah, it was Shit. like, I was like, Mike, board slide this. Okay. And he goes to board slide and he fucking... Gets the board in between his legs, yep. breaks his dick. Oh, whoa. First Bro stop. Broken. Well, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> touch it. But he broke it. He I mean, he said I've it. heard it can happen. Oh. I don't know. He said broken. Okay. Wow. Dude. And, you know, so we took him to the hospital. Big stick. Or actually, He's I didn't take broken. him to the hospital. The guy, the skate park guy, took him to the hospital because we. I said, I have to take photos. Can this guy take you to the skate park? Sure enough, you know, they went to this, the hospital. And then when I went, you know, we went and spent, spent the night at the skate park owner's house and the guy came back and he's like, oh, Mike's bad. Like his dick's broken. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if he's going to make the trip. And I was like, all right. So me and Owen went and visited him the next morning. Uh -huh. Basically gonna saying, like, if you're going home, we're out, we're out of here. You, right. And yeah, he's like, OK. So that was the end of the trip for Mike. That was it. Damn. He went home. Yeah. And it was just me and Owen. Okay. So I didn't, and I didn't have to call anybody. Uh, 
It was continued. You just continued you know, on. Right. And people, you know, I think he was, <laughs> he, <laughs> when, I, when I tell people about it, they're like, you just left him? What else could we do? You know, like. Right. <laughs> He was done. <laughs> I mean, he probably got a flight home. His dad flew out. Oh, oh, oh was man. that bad? Okay, yeah, to help him, you know. I mean, his dick, I think, it's swollen up to a wow, dude, gigantor horrible. state. Oh, Jeez. and he catheter the whole works. Oh, wow. Uh, someday you should have him on. And he'll tell you about okay. it. Okay, <laughs> that's just, um, we'll be looking forward to that. So you went. <laughs> you continued on the trip, but you actually made that an article. Yeah, that was my. Then it was my very first article that I wrote. And did all the photos for. Wow. Yeah. But was it mainly just your buddy then? You got a couple photos no, of Mike? No, it was like, people, like Tom Grohl. We met people like Tom oh, Grohlski on the trip. Okay. We went to all these different spots that were known. Gotcha. You know, and met. I, you know, I really don't know how we met him because, again, I wasn't calling anybody. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just like, we're at Cedar Crest. Who's coming? Right. And people just show up. Right. Um, you know, actually, it's funny because at Cedar Crest, and again, I was skating the whole time. You know, this was part of my problem with photography in the early years because again i told you that i was doing it for so i could skate you know or get out of the office and you know that was so i would go from skating full pads to like now i'm taking a photo of somebody mm -hmm. you know, like with knee pads on still sweating <laughs> yeah yeah and so they weren't the best photos you know when i look back i'm like dude i could have done a lot better mm -hmm. but so in cedar crest spike jones was in at, he just showed up because he was friends with my roommate this guy Terrence and so Spike was at Cedar Crest when we were and he shot photos of me you know mm -hmm. and he was already working for Terrence so I knew Spike but oh. I didn't know he was going to be there and he shot photos of me which I'm like wow I have these Spike Jones photos <laughs> you know, I have photos of me that Grant shot from like 82 83 I have photos that Spike shot of me from so late dope. 80s Dan Sturt shot of me and I had a cover of Power Edge that Dan Sturt shot wow I hated the photo because it was not it was me skating, like doing a G turn or something in, mm -hmm. a, in an alleyway. But you know, these are things I, the, get, to, I get to say. To like, yeah. totally, yeah. yeah. Right. Wrong with that? That's yeah. amazing. I think with Scott Oster had a, a photo of doing a G turn, yeah, as well. So mm -hmm. I mean, legendary shit right there. But legendary photographer, exactly. Too. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, straight up. So Spike Jones was there. He took photo. Did those photos get run that he took of you? Um, later. Like, later. Okay. Probably like an the skateboard mag or something. I mean, they're definitely on my Instagram just because. And I, I mean, I got the slides and I just would just like, oh, wow, these are prime. You know? So sick. But from that, you know, I would see the difference between his photos and my photos at that time. And I was like, man, I really got to get better. Mm. But it took a while. It took to the point of when vert skating died. At that point, I was kind of like, well, now I don't get to skate. So that's when I really concentrated on photography and yeah, actually right. you know when with people like jeremy and ron you know those are the guys that i i was assigned to more or less you know just oh, basically because yeah. my roommate was the team manager at, at airwalk mm -hmm. so jeremy and ron were always at our house always just like jeremy klein jeremy klein and if you can ron imagine Chap jeremy klein. chapman in 1991 at your house <laughs> and ron chapman at your house like this is you know ron before drinking or anything like it was, so they were just spastic yeah right going all the time fuck those guys you know just non-stop and uh, they would just go let's go shoot swift you get off the vert stuff and let's go do this and you know so then i started shooting them and it made me think more about the photo than it than when i was shooting vert you know what i mean like yeah because yeah. all i was thinking about when i was skating vert was skating vert not shooting a photo i would just be like all right got some right make make my employer happy um <laughs> And probably in street, you could do more with it, I would assume. Because vert, you kind of have maybe standard angles that you would use. But I had no idea what I was doing in street. Yeah. I mean, I came from, a, like, street skating in my era was slappies. Mm. You know, that was like you did after the park closed. You went and did slappies, board slides. And stuff. Sure. These guys were doing stuff that, uh, to me, was like, whoa. And so I had to figure out how to time everything, you know, like the – Shooting a photo on vert, that was the one thing I could do right away was I could get the timing right. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I, would, I could get the trick at the exact right moment and be like, whoa, that's good. Right. How'd you do that? And that? You know, people will say that now, like, oh, you can do that. How do you get it? How do you know the right moment? And it's just, you know, just from being a skateboarder, you just have feel that. It, yeah. yeah. But in street skating, I didn't. Like, especially then, because that was when it was like the revolution. It was like flip tricks were starting. You know, I went to Las Feliz with Ron. Mm-hmm. And he's doing pressure flips. And I mean, I just was like, oh, how do I fucking shoot this thing? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, like you don't have 
where the board's going or what like, what, yeah. what, what looks What's the, the best. Good timing, you yeah. know? Plus, so, it's film, so you have to get it developed, go look at it. Oh, that wasn't the right timing, oh, this, yeah. that, and the other. So I'm sure, yeah. Seems hard. A lot of hit Definitely. and miss. Oh, man. And then, you know, then getting grilled by those guys. <laughs> the fuck, Swift? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm learning though, thanks. Was there a big trick that you remember specifically that you like, you fucked up on? <laughs> just one? Um, well, what's one good story? If there uh, is something one. Something that I fucked up on? Cause I feel like that must have happened, like you were mentioning, like, like when, just the shot. film, yeah, like this, in the film days. It actually is pretty rare. Mm. I mean, they just weren't as good as I would like. As you know, looking back at it, I look at it like, wow, I could have done that better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like something would still come out, but it wouldn't yeah. be to the part like where you're like, oh, this is one. Right. I mean, things that I've never done, I've never lost rolls of film. Mm. You know, a lot of photographers are like, I fucking lost it. Oh man, I yeah. was coming. I don't know where. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, idiot. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, yeah, just don't know what they're doing. Yeah. You know? And I'm not saying that I was better at it, but I just had that good because of Grant. I, I at least got the fundamentals down mm -hmm. as far as, you know, what was going on. So if I shot too early, who would have known back then? Yeah. Nobody, you yeah. know? It just became this thing, like, where you developed how a trick is shot. Like, and I have a a photo that Bern, Mike Burnett shop sent me. Like, and this is, it was a black and white photo of his, and this is probably 94. And he was in college. And he sent me this photo as, like, a fan of Trans World. So, if, sorry if I put you on the bus there, Mike. But <laughs> you sent me this. I still have it. And it said, "I like how you. I like how your photos. You show how kick, kick flips should be caught." Oh. And so I was one of the first guys to actually shot photos where kick flips were being caught on the back foot. Okay. Mm. Front that's, foot's a little off. Yeah. The that's back amazing. foot. Yeah. It's catching it. Um, and I was like, "What's he talking about?" Like I didn't even re re actually realize it yet. Mm. He's catching the pile. Interesting. And you know, looking back, it's like, oh. I get it now. Yeah. You know, so, so then like it kind of, you get to the point of like the rally cover of trans world. Like that's where I got to. Got you. Know, you. Within right. A few years. So I mean, not that I'm, I was great, but like that part, I, I was starting to understand street because that's what I was doing. Majority of the time. Yeah. Are you talking about the tray flip? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was insane. I mean, I think that that was kind of the, that point of my, of learning. Like at that point I knew street skating. Like, uh, you know, in a couple yeah. of years, I kind of got to the point of, like, not knowing anything about it other than, you know, what was jump ramps, what was the earlier street skating, which doesn't equate to now I can, oh, I get it, you know. And it took things like going to Dayton, Ohio for nine days to shoot with Rob Deerdick in 1992, <laughs> like not even knowing the dude. And here's your ticket. You're coming out there. You're staying with Chris Carter in his house in his basement. And <laughs> you're going to shoot with Rob every day for nine days. At yeah. that point, were you just shooting photos? Because I could have swore you filmed a lot back then, too, right? I didn't film on that trip, but so that was 90. That was before I filmed. Oh, okay. So you're going just shooting photos. Just, just shooting photos and interviewing him. Mm -hmm. So I was still like, I, I wasn't, I was a associate editor by then and senior photographer. Mm hmm. So I was basically doing all, you know, the, the writing and shooting and conceptualizing, like, kind of like, who gets an interview? Well, let's do Rob Deerick. Well, you're going. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Idiot. And I didn't know Rob and at that time. Like, I think I'd met him once through, because I shot something for Tracker once. Mm. Um, but that was it. Like, it was like him coming and I shot a photo, a sequence, and then he left. And, but here I am, nine days with this kid, 16-year-old. <laughs> I'm in my mid-20s. And, you know, he was a... He was crazy. Yeah. I mean, you all know him as crazy Rob now, but like back then when it came to skateboarding, like he was, he had the most freak outs. Like mm -hmm. he would lose his fucking mind. Like if he wasn't landing something, I mean, he left me at a spot in somewhere in Ohio. Okay. Just left. like I was shooting a sequence of him. He's fucking losing his mind, gets in his car and drives off. Oh shit. And I don't have a car. <laughs> Did he come uh, back? Like, like, <laughs> no, I don't. You're like, I came here with you. I don't have yeah, a phone. Yeah, yeah. Like, later, dude. Oh, I don't even have a pager. Not, nothing. It was just like, is this real? Did he just leave me here? Then he came back like an hour later, but like. <laughs> an hour later, you're still there. And you wow. I'm sorry, dude. I just couldn't. I fucking lost my mind. You know, however Rob talks. And I was like, okay, don't do that again. <laughs> I have no idea where I am. And, but those are the kinds of things that would happen for nine days like you know sequences like nine rolls of film boom right 
right, I'm not going to be able to make this one today. And so I have a backpack full of film shooting the stuff and he doesn't want to shoot stills until the end. So then we have to cram all that stuff in the last couple of days. Cause wow. Yeah. It was nuts. Wow. And I don't know if, I mean, do you remember that interview at all? Who says 92? Yeah. So I started skating 91 ish. So I, I don't, that yeah. I was before. There was a photo that wasn't in the interview that you might know, like a, there was a girl smoking a cigarette and him doing a nose slide on a rail. I love that photo. Mm. That's from the same trip. Okay. But that was in a different, that wasn't in his interview. That was huh. in something else. Cause he made that really janky. Like it was like, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but because of the way, you know, that girl, that all happened supernaturally. Like these, these ghetto girls were just like in the back of this building where this handrail is right by Dodge skate park. And they were just, you know, bugging us like, yeah, you guys are smoking cigarettes. And like the girl that was smoking the cigarette couldn't have been more than seven years old. Really? What? She just plopped herself down right in front of the handrail smoking a cigarette sideways and it looked like a dinosaur junior like cover yeah or something. yeah okay wow. and so there's a photo of rob like he's solid on a snow slide and i was like wow what's it gonna hurt to run this yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah back then i mean the film was uh, i mean you're traveling to dayton i'm sure like trans world and them they're buying film and you guys are just i mean you're burning yeah. rolls left and right you divvy it up yeah yeah i mean that was and that was in the early days of burning film you know right. i mean there was a time when we did video grabs so that was why i picked up a camera uh, right okay so that would have been early 93 like so they'd got the point like after you know 92 when i filmed that when i shot the thing of rob mm -hmm. skateboarding was still kind of it had dropped a lot as far as the 80s mm -hmm. and, so, and this is you know money coming into the magazine like it, the pages were getting smaller it was it was noticeable but it wasn't like to the point where like oh my god yeah by 93 it was oh my god like magazine 72 pages so how do Shrink. we how do we make a magazine how do we save money these were things that we'd have to deal with like on on a weekly basis you know mm -hmm. and so we're shooting too much film you can't shoot that much film but big brother had come out and they were all video grabs right you know for the most part and it was all the best tricks all the best skaters how do we compete with that well, we start. We've got video cameras, yeah. You know, and we started. I'd have to go on a shoot. I'd shoot like ten frames, maybe, of somebody skating. Mm -hmm. Hope that I get him in the right position, right? So like in a good, like, oh, he's in it solid. But I can't look at the back of the camera. I'm just like, got it. Yeah. And he's like, okay, <laughs> let's film it now. Right. And so then I'm filming sideways because that was we figured out that that way it would fit better on the in the pages when you lay it out oh for sequences yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Huh. so we shot everything sideways and then yeah skaters would ask us later hey can i get that clip uh it's sideways <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i don't know i don't know this guy's filming yeah. sideways over here he's kind of oh weird. wow yeah. that's crazy and to get those video grabs we didn't have an in-house place like the art director had no idea what to do with what do i do with this digital file i don't what yeah. So we had to like go to a place, have them grab it each frame, and then we'd have to manipulate it somehow. And so you'd still there was still a process. You had to take it to a video place, have them extract these right. frames give us, out. Give us a a, a floppy disk, right. maybe. I don't yeah. remember what it was back then. <laughs> wow. um, and we'd go back to the art director and go, "Here you go." And he'd be like, "Well, I, what do I do with this?" And, and this was Gary Davis was the art director at this time, and. This is when we knew, Grant and I, that we needed to get a new art director because he couldn't. Mm. I mean, he was. I don't, did I bring. What are we looking for? The thing with the separations on it, like one of these, this thing right here. I can't really grab it. Maybe I can. Wait, wait, wait. Which happens to be my checkout. Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, um, what? Nice plug. So this. <laughs> Back there. Oh, what? <laughs> check what? me out. <laughs> nice plug. Whoa. This is, before, this is before I worked there, so I got okay. this check out legitimately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but this is how a magazine was done, you know, before, like, before desktop publishing. Like, mm -hmm. you would have to send everything out right. to someplace. But things like this were up on a board, like mm -hmm. a wall. Like, right. there would be all the pages in a magazine laid out on a board with these tissue papers that you got to look at and like make edits and stuff and then they'd send it off and these would come back wow um and so you're laying all this out and then making corrections and the 
they'd have to like take type out like and put some wax oh, type weird. on top of it. So wait, why does it? Why is one part black and white and then this one's color? Because that those are called separations. Okay. And that's just what the printer would use to make them. The, the you know the magazine at that time and then would you just send this this actual off to the printer for the magazine N no these would come to us mm -hmm. so we could look at it okay to make sure everything this is like was a good. proof yeah okay um but then how would it get to the printer the files would go to the printer just uh, and i don't know on the I floppy never, drive maybe <laughs> floppy drive, i don't know <laughs> I didn't, yeah okay like it was like this disconnect between what the old ways and the, oh, and wait, the, and the ways that were coming. Yeah, so we there's got CMYK. CMY. Oh yeah, yellow, magenta, blue. That is black. That's a lot to do for one for Seriously, two pages. Yeah, you know, sure. it's amazing that you got your. Well, and the but, that sponsor Schmidt's Dick and Goldwing. <laughs> when it became known that Dave Swiss was, uh, oh, you read that going? <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote your checkout? Who Gary, wrote? Gary Davis. Oh, okay. Gary Davis, huh? Good old Gary. Dude, checkouts, man, that was a big thing. That was. It was huge. I mean, for a really long time. I feel like I was the last guy in my generation to get one. Hmm? That's what it felt like. Mm. It's like when's this coming out? And I, Grant, again, Grant didn't like me. There, were, there was photos of me, but I wasn't it the one that was, yeah, was like, no, he's a troublemaker. He's not, he can't do it. So, but it's interesting because back then I think that like, you know, taking photos and this was what, not early nineties going into like two thousands and stuff. When did the digital camera even make its appearance? Oh, the digital camera was like 2001. Yeah. 2001. For, for at least for skateboarding. Well, here's the, like here's the question though, is like Big Brother's running video grabs. Mm -hmm. You guys are still running film. You switch over to video grabs. Is that causing you guys to i don't know not freak out but you're di you're diminishing what you guys are doing by actually now putting video grabs in instead of actually still photography and sequences and was it more work mm. too <laughs> <laughs> um for me yeah because i was new mm. like so basically like i was like coming into this thing like i i didn't know the old ways really like i i started there so I got to see these things mm -hmm. and under like, oh, that's a lot of work. You know, I mean, when I would see Gary laying out the magazine, like I would go, I'd open a door to a room and he'd, it'd be dark and there'd be this dude on the ground with a slide projector with, <laughs> with a photo on the wall. And he's drawing around the photo, right? Mm -hmm. On like a car, piece of cardboard. Uh -huh. And that was how he was doing the layout. He would like put the photo where he wanted to and then the type, he would kind of in his head, mm -hmm. that was art direction. Right. Wow. Back then. Wow. So, you know, and you'd have to order out for this type mm -hmm. and that would come in on like a sheet and you'd have to like cut pieces of it and like wax it on the thing. And how many, what? this is how many pages of this mag you're already at? 70 pages? Um, so 89, 90, there were probably like 172 pages, maybe Damn, 200, I think dude. was the biggest magazine at Transville That's did crazy. before the next big wave. I was going to say, I mean, we got up to like 400 pages yeah. in Look a magazine. Thing. 456. Yeah. 456. That one's stacked right here. These are I the mean, good we're old talking, days. <laughs> we're talking about like, th those are the biggest Vogue magazines. Yeah, we can get to that later. Oh, we, we okay. We'll get to the financials of that later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me write that down because yeah. I, I need to know these things. But so, you know, Gary and Grant were used to the old ways. And so mm. Grant was more about like, he hated video. He was like, fuck. But I can Grant, imagine. Grant That's was willing to like kind of change. Like kind of, you know what? This is what kids want or this is what everybody wants. Mm. We should we should do this. Mm. And I was like, yeah, we have to do this. Like, this is what Big Brother's doing. Like, we're trans, but we need to do it better. Right. You know, because we have all these resources. We've been around. We should we should do it. And Gary was like, and he wouldn't say anything. He just would just not show up. He oh. Or he would wait to the last minute to do anything. Hmm. So it kind of put us in this crush. Like, we had to still go along with how he wanted to do things. Till finally, we just were like, we, we got to fire him. Wow. You yeah. know? Which, which sucked because I love Gary, but it was like he wasn't going to advance to the next level. Yeah. And, and at that time, there was a point where, have you heard of Ted Newsom? Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He came into our, to my sphere, mm -hmm. and, I, you know, and I, I knew that he was doing art for Ren Clothing and uh, some other clothing company. I was like, do you ever think about laying out a magazine? And he was like... I'd try it. You know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'd, I'd be in trying it. You know, he was like... 18 i think wow and i had met him on a skate trip before in charleston and so i kind of knew him but then you know we talked about that and he was like yeah i do it but i don't want to take gary's job and i was like well i think you're you might be taking gary's job right and so we had 
Oh, Ooh, Ooh, nice it's save. It's not the beer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we got to save the checkout. Yeah, yeah. It's plastic anyway. We'll wipe it off. It'll just scrub off. <laughs> but so it became, you know, we had to fire Gary. Right. We'd be in this room with Gary and tell him, like, yeah, we got to get rid of you, you know. And he was like, like the first employee of Transworld, wow. kind of lived in the building, kind oh of thing. God. Like, devastating. But he, like yeah. I said, he wasn't going forward. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the interest anymore. Right. So he knew it was time to move on. Yeah, he didn't cry or anything. He just, all right, where do I pick up my last check? And that was wow. You know, he got out. Ted Newsom came in, and yeah, within a day or two, like we had a magazine that was laid out. Okay. With the cover, Dune was on the cover in Venice. In on, over the Roger, the Don't little squares it. of sand. Oh, the oh, sand, sand gaps. gaps. Yeah, so Santa that magazine was laid out by Gary Davis and finished by Ted Newsom. Wow. Um, okay. And so, this was what year? Nineteen ninety-three. Ninety-three. Okay. So you know, fun fact. Fun fact. Yeah. No, I love to. I, I like to know the years and stuff. And yeah, so then, then Ted worked for us for I don't know, eight years. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ted's Do a you, good guy, man. Oh yeah, He's for great. sure. Do you go and look through the old magazines sometimes? Yeah. Just because that must be a trip. <laughs> <laughs> that sure would be enough. amazing to look through all that stuff. I mean, it's hard to look through all of it, but I mean, I have a whole wall of magazines. So, mm -hmm. Thrasher, Trans World, Skateboarder, Big Brother, Some Slap, Strength. Nope. Well, I mean, I might have a couple of copies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's cool. I mean, even when you came in here today, then you brought some magazines. We're all looking through yeah. the old mags and stuff. It's like nostalgia. I mean, you got yeah. To... Well, you... yeah. Talking about yeah. Rob Deerdick earlier, got a good photo of him hanging with the oh, a wolf, the wolf. A wolf. wolf. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just saw it. Right she now. got the uh, Jeremy Klein <laughs> second cover. Second cover. Yeah, that's a great cover. The first cover was uh, Eric Dressen. Eric D. That's right. We got it right here. <sighs> Eric D. I love Eric D. Damn. That was at, uh, where was this? Denmark, Europe. Copenhagen. Denmark, Copenhagen. Ah. I didn't know young Eric D., but I could assume he's the same guy that he is today. Quiet, kind of. A little, little stonier. A little, sto little stone. Uh -huh. Okay. Love that guy. So. No, he's great. Yeah, he's the best. We're, we're connected forever. So when did uh, the Transworld videos come about? Like, bam. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that, that year you're good at getting get to the next subject. Like I like it and following kind of a chronological order. Thank you, oh, Kelly. Oh, no problem, dude. I mean, that's why I brought the poster for dreams of children. Um, which, so skin Phillips, y'all have heard of him. He's mm -hmm. been on here. Yeah. Yep. He came into my life around 92, just came from Wales, started hanging around like at skate spots and I'd see him and he was, you know, he kind of. Knew I worked at Transville, so he kind of gravitated himself towards me mm -hmm. and was like, we'd hang out. And then I was like, you should, maybe you should come to Transville, see if we can get you a job, you know? And so I started, he started helping out, you know, as a photographer, as a video guy, um, you know, because we were shooting sequences on video cameras. Mm -hmm. um, so then me and him would go out on shoots together. He would video, I would photo, and, and we'd switch back and forth. Right. One day I'd be doing stills, he'd be doing stills the next days. And so we did that, I want to say, for a year. So we had, and by this time, we weren't filming sideways anymore. Yeah. It was, now we'd straighten <laughs> everything up because people were pissed at us. Yeah. We'd film the shit sideways. Yeah. And so now we're getting all this stuff, and, we're, and him and I are like, what do we fucking do with all this mm -hmm. shit? Should we make a video? And he started prodding me, like, you Swift, you know anybody? Can we do a video? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's a bad accent, Skip. <laughs> if you hear this, I haven't seen you in years, so I, I don't have your accent anymore. But we have all this footage. Um, I know Swank from Tumietto. They're producing videos. Maybe they'd want to do it. You know, like mm -hmm. we have this basically a four on one, but better. Right. You know, like it's, you know, it has parts. Because mm -hmm. by this time we kind of figured out, like, let's. Deer Deck, we have fucking shit tons of Deer Deck, Donger, uh, John Drake. We have all these people. Let's get a video. Yeah. Jamie, I think, had, had stuff in there. Okay. Rally. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Um, what do you think? He's, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll do it for you, guys. You know? And that's how it was, you know? Yeah. Like, wait, okay. He sets us up with a, a, video, a guy that produces the video, like mm -hmm. an editor. Okay. 
we kind of could go from tape to tape. You know, it was a different time. So it was, it, t- it was like, what, you know, we had to log every fucking tape with, you know, the time codes and all this shit. Like, it took so long. Like, that was me working, you know, I'd work at Transworld, then I'd go home and I'd log tapes and Skin would log tapes. Wow, that's a lot. Like that, I don't know, that tape has, like, where the Markovich kick clip mm-hmm. is, 140.2, and we'd go in there, and if it was wrong, we'd be fucked. Like, we'd have right. to go search the tape for an hour, we're on this guy's time. But, you know, two weeks, we sat and fucking went back and forth with this guy, and I picked the music, did it all together, and... and that video came out. Yeah. And you know, we did a premiere with Tumnetto. Came out. And I think Bob DeNike from Santa Cruz called my boss and was like, hey, what's up with you guys making a video with Tumnetto? And so I don't know anything. I don't know this call happened. And I, I, you know, this boss comes into me, Brian Selstrom. He's like a a grown man in his late 40s uh-huh. um, in my 20s he just comes in swift what is up with this i you know i don't know what's going on this dreams of children stuff and i was like uh, you know like caught in the headlights i, I, I don't know I, I'm, I'm not allowed to do this what, 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 you know just stuttering i don't know what to do and i was like we're gonna we're gonna talk about this and he just jams off because he's got oh. to go to some other meeting i call swank and i'm like dude this fucking shit storm's coming down right now oh. like <laughs> might need to come work for you He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, Brian, blah, blah, blah. So he calls Brian, you know, because Tom Yeno at this time is like one of the big advertisers in trans world, you know, a foundation with toy machine, mm-hmm. pig wheels, whatever they had, they were spending money. And he just grills this guy about those guys, all they want to do is, you know, work in skateboard and they just want to take photos and shoot video and they don't care where it goes and this and that and you're going to fucking stomp on them? You know, and he was just like, okay. And wow. he just came in and apologized. Okay. And the next thing he says, well, now you guys are going to make two videos a year. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, wow. bet your, I bet your head exploded. And what? Yeah. And, so, and it was me. And so then Skin got hired. Like he, mm. at, this, at this point, he wasn't an actual employee, but then that got him hired. But, you know, doing two videos... It wasn't. I mean, and make a magazine. Like, right. Yeah, that's a lot of work right there. <sighs> So then we, Ted helped out a lot in the videos. Like, so he, he ended up editing mm-hmm. all the first five, I think, before Ty. Wow. Oh, wow. Then we hired Atiba. Yep. So he was hired as a filmer. What year did the tra- uh, transfer video start? 94. 94. He was hired as a filmer? Yeah. Atiba? Did he, ha- was he shooting photos at that point yet, or was he just? Uh, he had, I think he had an article, one, and he mo- had moved out to California. But like he didn't have a, he wasn't working at Transworld, and there wasn't really a job for him in '94. It was like, well, you can shoot photos and maybe they'll run. And yeah. mm. so he ended up getting a job at Tumietto as their filmer for a little bit. You know, so he'd go out because he was good friends with Josh and Heath, and so he would just film with them. And then, but they weren't paying him fucking hardly anything. You know, yeah. I, mean, I think it was not enough to live in California even at that time. And so once this opened up that we were doing videos, mm-hmm. we needed another guy, and he was like, he wanted to be a photographer, but here's this opportunity for you to come in as a filmer, right? And we'll figure out the rest, you know, because mm-hmm. he knew that we did both things, you know, we filmed and shot photos, sure, and basically could do whatever we wanted in, in the magazine. Like there was nobody going, or, you know, there was nobody outside of the five people that were doing the magazine that knew anything about skateboarding at Transworld, like. We were the only ones that knew, and they didn't want to bother us. Like, we were scary people. We were like <laughs> skateboarders, you know. Like they had snowboarding, which was e- you know oh, snowboarding so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that was blowing up. So they were just like, "All right, you guys just do what you want." And that guy that that we came in and hassled me yeah. about the video, you know, he he had told me like, "We're not gonna." Because I was afraid that, that they were going to shut the magazine down like in 90, early '93 before we hired Ted, because mm-hmm. it was really small. And, like it went from making money to not making any money and people are taking pay cuts and i had talked to him i was like so is this are we gonna is this gonna go out of business he's like you know what the skateboard mag is the foundation of this building it's gonna be here forever because without the skateboard magazine nobody's even gonna pay attention to us Uh and all right cool and so he's like you guys just do what you do we're not gonna bother you but just do it wow okay which for me was like, 
All right, skateboarding. Let's You're do good. it. You know, that, I mean, so at that, that point, we just started changing cover logos, like all just you know, however we wanted to design it. Nobody was like, "What is this crazy shit?" Mm -hmm. You know, like before that, you know, at this time, we would have consultants coming. Like all the shit that's on this cover, yeah, was from some some guy from New York coming in. Like, here's what you got to do if you want to sell magazines. You got to put oh, hot words on the cover and oh. blurb oh, it wow. out so really? people that don't know skateboarding will buy into it. Like clickbait know, like, type stuff. So yeah, yeah, basically clickbait. Yeah, you know, early form clickbait. But yeah. you know, like hot new. You know, all they had buzzwords, and they would sure. tell us these things, and we would just kind of make fun of it. Like, and this one doesn't have them, but we would. There's maybe this one does. Yeah, this one does for sure. <laughs> so we would kind of go over the top on it. Hazardous interview, stuntman Frankie Hill. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Beyond three sixty ollies. This could be you. <laughs> I mean, that was on purpose. Right. Like, look, buy. Buy. Because these guys, you know, they're paying these dudes like three oh. or $4,000 a month just to come in for 20 minutes a month, meet with all the different magazines, tell them what, you guys are doing this wrong. If your numbers will go up if you do this. Oh, my God. And did you see the numbers go up? No, because we just kept, the magazine just kept getting smaller and smaller. Mm. And it was, we knew that, like it was just based on the economy. Skateboarding was doing a whole different thing. You know, there was just it became different, and sure. we had seen it before in the '80s. Like skateboarding, went, like I was talking about the skate yeah. park thing. Like once skate parks are gone, skateboarding was pretty much dead For until sure. For sure. it rose back up mm -hmm. with skateboarders. So I was, you know, again, I was the new guy, and I was getting I was getting raises every year. Okay. So there was no problem for you me. Were I was good. like, oh, man, this is cool. I'm making $10 an hour. It's like super. <laughs> Better than Vaughn's. Right. And I'm doing what I love. Exactly. And we're having fun with these people. Like, again, they, we would do this stuff, and they Just wouldn't know we were making fun of them, but we were totally making fun of right, them. Right, right. <laughs> That's funny. I love that. And so, I, But I think people that didn't know us or didn't know about us, like they would say, like, why do you guys put all that shit on your cover? And I'd have to explain it to him. Like, it's just fucking, we're just messing with, we we have to put stuff on the cover, but we're going to have fun with it. You right. Know, if we're going to yeah. do it, we're going to fucking go over the top. Sure. That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> so Transworld videos were born. I think Skin told a similar story where they, he was just had, you guys just had cameras, you were filming, doing all that stuff. And that's how they were born. Yeah. Pretty much. It was just, uh, but were you guys actually doing the two videos a year or was that, how long did that last? All the way to like quit. Seriously. But well, I, the videos, I sorry, go ahead. No. Okay. <laughs> so we would do one like mainline video, like Uno. Yeah. Yes. And right. then we would do a trick tips video. Okay. Just, so the product would... department needed two things to sell. Okay. Right. And so that's how we did it. Got you. So you weren't doing two major Starting videos. Point, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, for sure. Dude, Uno might, if you look back at that video, it is a full all star video if you look who like years later all like you had costin you have muska uh like gershon mosley that's one of my favorite videos of all time so thank you for making that video yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i watch it every now well, and then too yeah it's, it's online have you, ever seen, have you seen dreams of children i haven't seen that one actually i mean deer Deck's part in that is fucking like i would say it's probably his best part i mean as far as like him being a skateboarder without all the flash and you know all the other stuff yeah like it's his like the stuff he does, you're like, wow. Like the switch tail slide of Hubba, like all these oh, things man. that like made him or gave him those opportunities to go forward. Right. Because, and I'm not, you know, Deer Deck's Deer Deck, but like he didn't like progress further, I don't think. You know, that was like his high point and then he just kind of like wrote it. Plateaued right. kind of, yeah. He was always business minded. He had, yeah. his mind was elsewhere. No, but sure. you know, it's funny, but before, like at, when that was going on, it he was the, the freak out dude. The dude For that was, sure. everything was like, ah. Yeah. Skate, 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 skate. Like, I, and I would hang out with those dudes, and they'd be, that was all they thought of skating, and then, you know, smoking weed and cigarettes sure. at night, you know? Right, right. Is but, Dreams of Children, is that on, like, YouTube probably somewhere? I think you can find it on YouTube. Yeah. And that no. was the first, was that a trans world? So it was through People Tonietto. associate it with it yeah. because of us, and it was everything that was you would see in trans world, like, it's a sweat, but it is done yeah. through Tomieto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I got a nice thirty five hundred dollar check for that. Nice. Yeah. Thirty five hundred. Yeah. You, I would think it would be more. Back then that was a lot probably. I think for that time. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Pretty damn good. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for a skateboarder? 35 for me, 35 for skin. I'd give 50 Yes, 50. okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, they paid for all the production. Right. Well, well, I didn't care. I was like, 3,500 more bucks? Sick. Okay. Let me ask, this, is, this may be a weird, or a weird question, no, but no. like, what, what was your thought process of naming these videos? Like, obviously, Uno was like one, but like, there was like four wheel drive. You're like, why are these the names of these videos? At that time, so the first four before Ty, we, again, Grant, me, Ted, Skin probably, we would just be in a, in a room like this in a desk and we'd just be talking about shit. Like, what do we name this fucking thing? <laughs> and I mean, Dreams of Children was just me and Skin and it was just, it was a, a jam song. Mm. And I was like, I think that'd sound cool. And Skin agreed and we just went with it. Right. Uno, four wheel drive, Greatest Hits. Oh, yeah. Greatest Hits was a good one, too. I like that. Cinematographer. Yeah. Mm. I think those were the other. Yeah, those are the other. And that was just us just, like, sitting around, like, what about Uno? It's the first one. Yeah. Uno. One. <laughs> 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 yeah. Greatest yeah. Hits. It's just going to be a compilation of all the fucking, like, because there's no parts in Greatest Hits. So it was just, yeah. you know, single trick. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, what was? I guess the one after. What, what I don't was, know. Four-wheel drive was who knows. Yeah. Was, that sounded good. <laughs> interface is when they started to get like more I yeah know. i think that was ty's first oh, okay interface i, is I don't know too. that he did the whole thing but that was when we hired ty as a filmer and he i mean obviously he quickly took over and was just then it was ty's videos from then on right wow um, that probably helped you out a lot Did yeah and, and all that, and i it gave me another job i was just the um video production manager okay yeah. so i was the editor-in-chief Video production manager, senior photographer, um, and consultant for advertising or whatever. You know, it was just like all these different things that were thrown on me. And yeah. I was like, wow, I'll, I yeah, still get to go skate. And you're, you're going, are you going out with Ty on filming missions? I was to f take photos. Um, I did here and there. I, at, at 96, I had a kid, a child, mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. my first daughter. Okay. So I kind of like kind of pulled back a little bit. Tiba was kind of taking over a lot more mm. of those missions. Got you. I would just, if I had a, a project I was working on, like an interview or, if, you know, with Rally or, or Heath or somebody that I was shooting a lot, I would shoot those guys. Mm. Um, just because it was, it became too much to add, you know, to add the full out as a photographer, you know, at night, you know, cause this is when all of a sudden you got lights and you're starting to do all that stuff. You're out till fucking three in the oh, morning. Oh yeah. Like, that was Ty's whole, he loved that. The mission. Yeah. And you know who came up? I mean, it was him and Heath. Yeah. Cause Heath did not want to skate when anybody was around. And so when he was filming, did he have, Heath have a part in Interface or? Yeah, it was Interface. Him so, and Barra, I think. So sure. that video, Heath yeah, did yeah. not want to film anything in the daytime because he didn't want to be around people. <laughs> I love that. So he bought the lights. Oh, Heath those did. Guys, Heath bought them. And so then they went out and filmed at night. Wow. Only. I mean, it's, it's a cool concept, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many different ways to, you know, go about skateboarding. For sometimes. sure. So, when it, be, and before that, like, with Heath... If we, we want to start getting into Heath stories, he's, you know, going in to UCI yeah. with Heath in the daytime, and, the, you know, you get there, there's nobody around. You're at lunch or whatever, and there's nobody around. And all of a sudden, 40 minutes into it, people are starting to just mill around, oh. they're stopping, they're hanging out, like, and he's just fucking losing his mind mm -hmm. in front of people, and he's just throwing his board, and... Yeah. Finally, once he says, I'm not fucking coming out with anybody. If they're around, he'd yell at people like, fuck you! <laughs> just, you know, like, whoa, this is embarrassing. Yeah. Um, and he wasn't as bad as other people, but he definitely, like, his mind, he could not focus. Once he, once he lost it, it was done. Wow. Oh, man. And so nighttime, when nobody was around. He could focus. Yeah. Right. I feel like that was, uh, sight unseen was very heavily at nighttime. Yeah. That was... That was, that was all. That's the thing. I would hear a lot of things with Heath. It was either at night or very early, like crack it on morning style, like missions. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. That, that holidays. UCI, like the 50-50 on the big ledge that had a gap out. Oh, after. yeah. And that was like 7 o'clock in the morning on Thanksgiving. Wow. Like, <laughs> guaranteed to not have a single person anywhere around it. You know, one try, did it, done. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Dude, that thing is huge. And there was a cover. Uh, no, it wasn't the it was cover. It was ad. No, no, I'm thinking of this other one, the 50-50 the down the hubba that curved. It's it was right going you. to be It was going to be a... To the left. That? Yeah. Oh, so 
It was your second cover. The first cover was uh, Danny, Way. Danny Way. That's mm. right. But it was going to be the first cover. Yes, sir. Right. How did you know? I just know. You heard my story before. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. But I love Heath's stories. So that's what's yeah. fascinating. Is like there's tons. I I want to hear them. I want to hear them. Yeah. We don't get to hear a lot of Heath stories. No. People want to keep it secret. No. Do they? No. no I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's funny that I just learned recently that he fucking hates that. He doesn't like that cover. Um, and not that he doesn't like the photo. Like, uh -huh. So he wasn't trying to insult me. This right. is like somebody wanted me to hit him up about doing an interview about that cover. And he, he's like, you know what, Swift? I, I don't like that cover. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking hate me? Well, that's my that's my fucking swan song right there. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, I just don't like how I did it. Really? Because he kind of like comes off. Oh, at the end of it? Off the grind? You almost yeah. have to, though. I, that's why I'm like, how, you, what? You're an idiot. Like, yeah. And he's, but that's how he is. You know what I mean? Like, but at that time too, like he would do things and, and not care if, as long as it was going to get him what he wanted, mm. I think, you know, like he, he would, you, he would be just as happy with a fucking gnarly slam as a fucking hate. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. oh fuck, that's cool. I at least can use that slam, you know? Right. Like, right. And he, that's how his mind worked. You could see the good in it. But this was in like Santa Barbara or yeah. something, right? So you guys had to go up there. It was like crack of dawn also. It was like early in the morning. It's at a mall or something. Yeah. I, well, so I went one week. I went up, uh -huh. stayed at his house. He lived with Dan Rogers, I think. Um, so we got up in the morning, me, him, and well, just me and him. Drove and met Miner and Justin Regan mm -hmm. at the spot. And I think people were there, and it was just like, couldn't do it, over it. Right. So I had, you know, driven up from Oceanside, spent the night with his little dog, <laughs> his little dachshund, done the whole thing. But then I was like, all right, well, we'll fucking come back next week. And then that was next week. That was next week. Was, How many tries did that take? I'm trying to say, like, maybe 10. 10? Were you, were you there when he, uh, like, lips at El Toro? Did you shoot that? Yes. How was that what they yes. they drove into everything? That was no, gnarly. no, see? That was different. Kids think that. That well, was all staged. It was. Yes. Yeah. I mean it movie, was movie magic. Yeah. Well, I mean they drove that was, down it was the done stairs. post. Yeah, but it yeah. wasn't done that day. It was so Atiba had originally shot that or tried, you know, like the first time Heath went there to go do it. Heath tried it, slammed, like I think he just drove himself from the ground like five times and oh. this was couldn't it was done. Yeah. And I think Atiba had to go do something else. So when Heath was ready to go back, it was me, Heath, and Sue Trin. Oh, wow. Sue and then there. Mouse, who's the filmer, and Mouse's assistant filmer, shot it. I think he did it second try. <laughs> like, it's one roll of film, so I think there's just two sequences, and it's just one clip, one frame off a sequence that I used, and then Sue's sequence fisheye. Wow. And yeah, they came back later when and when they were finishing the video and did the oh, driving so down the thing. Oh, okay. Sorry, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so you better I apologize. Like back, I mean, <laughs> better apologize to Kelly. No. You thought it was well. It's just gnarly that they even still drove no, but, you the know, car down. That, it. Yeah, it, it, was, it was. Then that was Jeremy and Heath. Like, what should we fucking do? You know, like <laughs> that whole concept. You know, like I got to shoot them going off the pier. Mm -hmm. You know, on fire. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Which was another like fucking four in the morning, like get out to the OB pier and like Damn. dark and they're getting coated with this fucking goo like all over them. Like, Did they hire somebody to coat them or? Yeah, they had, do, a, whole, they like, had a whole thing. Crew. Like okay. a Holly, I don't know. It's I mean, amazing. Mouse, who the, was the filmer, was in charge of all that. I think he hired a stunt team or whatever, a safety team, whatever you want to call it. And they knew how to put people on fire. Okay. It'll be okay. You're not going to burn as long as you don't do this. Oh, as long as you don't fall on the deck. If you get in the water, you're good. I think you have like eight seconds or something. Yeah, it was crazy. Like once you're on fire, you have like eight seconds. And I think wow. that, well, they think yeah. they were going like maybe 100 yards on fire. Mm. Really? Yeah. Oh, because they were skating yeah, they, off of the, the. They had to start like from a stop, get torched, <laughs> just push toward this <laughs> fucking jump ramp. Yeah. <laughs> And into the water. And I think, and Jeremy, I think, fell he, right before it. That was in the final. Yeah, yeah he fell. And, and had to kind of crawl himself yeah. over. Yeah. Get but it was just weird to fling see. himself. Yeah. yeah. And it was cold water. It wasn't like fucking nice Hawaii water. Sure. It was yeah. like, brrr, but I guess they were cooking. <laughs> if you're on fire, cold Perfect. probably feels great. Yeah. So Sue was in a boat down below. Uh huh. 
and then I was at, on, right there where the fire hit. I mean, Jeremy almost ran into me like, on fire. <laughs> oh, shit. God. Damn. There was no other safety measures. That was it. Those guys are awesome, man. They changed. I don't know. Those video, that the birdhouse, the end. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, yeah. That video was dude, awesome. Those stunts like this. So shit. good, man. Um, what about the Heath? The uh, iconic Heath photo with the uh, uh, American flag in oh, the background. Oh, baby. Yes. Well. What's the question? I want to hear the story. Because <laughs> yeah. mm. so it's an iconic photo. I mean, so, everybody knows the... So you know about like skateboard magazines, right? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> People in power. Yeah. They have power and if somebody comes like, hey, what, what can I do for a cover? Mm. I was like, I don't know. But anyways, Heath was, you know, we were good friends. I mean, because I had known him since he was 14. And he would, he would always feel like, hey, can I do this? What do you think about this? Would it be a cover? Uh-huh. <laughs> and so he was he came down on his Harley and he came down and he was like hey if I get an American flag and we shoot a skate photo from American flag would I get the cover <laughs> uh, yeah sure why not okay and so we went to this rail in downtown somewhere like it's I think kind of a famous rail kind of goes down some sh- shallow stairs shallow stairs downtown. like they're not like not normal stairs but they're kind of longer yeah, stairs right. So it might be an eight stair rail. Oh, the Arco rails? No. What did he do on it? Near there. What did he do on it? He tried to do a backside Smith grind on it. Okay. I have the photo, but. Is it a round rail? It's a a square rail? Square rail. Square round mellow. Oh, is it the. In Chinatown? I don't know. Oh, is it it the flat bar type of one or a handrail? It's almost flat. It's a flat bar. Is it It's not flat. I'm going to have to get this. I mean, you don't have to put this. Me looking for this in the. Video. Oh, I'm curious it, now. Mm-hmm. I think it sounds to me like that. We said it was an eight stair. That, oh, eight stair. Yeah, this one maybe not that one. Uh, oh, the one at the school. Is it? Is that? A, oh, is, that a is it on I the feel bridge? Like it's right near one, the one ten freeway. Is it on the? Is it over? Is yeah. it on a bridge? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Can I see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I see? Yeah. Uh, near near Yoon's old house. Yeah. There was a you know that bridge with the yes. rail going down. Oh, the yes. Avenue of the Stars. I, in like Culver City. Type? No, 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 oh. downtown. Oh, downtown. It was like a bridge overpass. Yeah. And then there was those stairs. Was it overpass and, and over the 110? I mean, I don't know for sure if it was 110, but it was, I feel I like know, it was I, in that zone. Okay. So anyway, yeah. So that was like, I'll, I'll do, I, was, I actually suggested, hey, could you do backsmith? Mm-hmm. But I'd never seen him do a backsmith. He's like, no, but I can try one. Because <laughs> okay. like, for whatever reason, I really wanted to shoot a backside smith grind on a handrail. I don't think I'd done much of that. And I was like, oh, that'd be cool if we get that. Hmm. And so... He went out and bought this huge flag, <laughs> and then I had to bring Shad Lambert, um, another editorial guy, and this girl, Tanya, <coughs> who was my assistant. Uh-huh. We met him in L.A. like late at night, set the flag. These, they're all holding the flag, so four people holding this flag. Got you. And it's windy. <laughs> oh, shit. Right? So it's like a fucking sail. Like yeah. It's like going back and forth, and like they're barely holding on to it, and... He tries maybe like five backside smiths, like and gets into one, and mm-hmm. then he's just like, "I can't fucking do it. We're gonna have to do something, something else somewhere else." Okay. All right, whatever. So even the rail wasn't working out for him. He couldn't try. I think some it was other more trick. just the. Tr- he, well, he didn't want to. There wasn't any, really anything else he would want to do on that rail. Gotcha. I think. Okay. That would have been for him good enough to be on a cover. Like, I think he had convinced himself, like, if I can do a backsmith, nobody's ever seen me do that. That that would be cool on this rail. Gotcha. But when he couldn't do it, he was just like, "Fuck that." <laughs> So Oceanside High was the next, like, I'll backtail Oceanside High. All right, that'd be cool. That's easy. It's by my house. No mm. big deal. Get the same people together five nights from now. So we all meet up across the street from Oceanside High, and the gate's locked. Like, it's like this big, like, double, you know, 20-foot tall gate. Typical you can't school just, Well, yeah, you just can't fence. climb over it. Yeah. We have generators. We have all that shit. Um, how are we going to get in? Fuck. He's like, stay here. I'm like, All right. And he just fucking drives off in his police car. <laughs> and you could hear, like, cause it, Oceanside in 2001 was pretty, like, quiet. Like, uh, if you heard whistles, mm. run. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, and it was, like, Oceanside High was in kind of the gang area of Oceanside. Like, that was, like, there was the Center Street gang was right by the high school. And then there was another Pizzoli gang over here. And they were, you know, that was the zone we were in. But 
because I lived there, I didn't really feel like that fear. Like it wasn't like this is scary over here. Got you. Um, yeah. Until later, when I really learned about it, I was like, oh, we were there at that time. <laughs> yeah. So all of a sudden, I start hearing. You know, we start hearing the sound of like a grinding on a metal, or you know, like fuck, what's all that fucking noise? Okay. He comes back and he's like, "Fuck, I can't saw through the fucking lock." So he's trying to saws all it. Okay. But fuck it, I'll do this, and he just drives off. He doesn't tell us. He fucking just runs his car oh, straight okay. into the fence and just breaks the fucking lock off. Wow. You know what I mean? It just opens <laughs> because he's, you know the cop car has that that oh, bumper thing in the, the front. Grill, right? Yeah, yeah. He just fucking jams through it. Amazing. All right, come on over. I'll you know go over there. Um, we don't bring our cars. We just walk. It was across the street, and go into this. You know, it's like a <laughs> dark courtyard. Mm -hmm. Like we light it up. You know, generators for like two and a half hours. Like, and nobody bothered. We could hear whistles. Oh, really? You know, shit going. Yeah, like until he just kind of landed one that he thought was good enough. Like he had a hard time, uh -huh. and I think he kind of hand downed it or reverted it or something. It was something that he he again didn't really like as far as something for video got you that thing was big yeah it's a big set of stairs and round big, yeah. and like it wasn't like the uh, in 2001 doing a backside tail slide on that was that's true yeah for sure and i think i shot i mean he must have tried it 40 times damn dude i had a roll of 35 millimeter which is 36 exposure yeah so most of that roll and two rolls of two and a quarter hmm Okay. Yeah. 12. So 24, and maybe 24. So yeah, 48 times. That's a lot of jumping, dude. And then I think he like threw the, like he was so pissed that way he landed it. And he was just over. He was just beat. Threw his board on top of the roof. And we all just left, right? <laughs> okay, that was it. <laughs> Nothing left to do Two days that. later, he comes by Transworld and he's like, oh man, I fucking need that board. He needed the board for like either a photo shoot for Birdhouse or something. Oh, he needed the trucks. Like he mm. didn't want to set up new trucks. Oh. And he's like, you think uh, if I go to the school, it'll still be up there? I'm like, yeah, fuck, yeah, we'll be up there. So he just goes in the middle of the day and, like, climbs up on this <laughs> fucking thing. You know, again, it's before all the fucking school shooting. Or, you know what I mean? It's not, like, so gnarly back then. So mm -hmm. he could just walk on the campus when Got you. school's going on. Oh, wow, well, Climb up on the roof, on. grab his board, and jam. That was it. Yeah. Got his board back. Yeah. Just for the trucks. And he got an iconic photo. That's a great photo. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I did this idea, so yeah. I, only, I only take credit for pushing the button. No, but you made it. You know, you made it look the way that it's it looks. Team effort, there. yeah, exactly. I got a question, actually. Did you ever get in trouble by certain like schools or something by publishing photos on on covers or anything like that? Like you no, because no? mm -mm. I I always took like that is the most evidence you could ever have is just like yeah you're not supposed to skate here and I'm skating here and. Like, I always thought that maybe someone might have heard that or gotten that. But uh, See, I would have thought that, like, like we were talking about, like, the them driving down the stairs at El Toro. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That right. could have got them in trouble because they actually sure. fucking fucked up some shit. Yeah. But I don't think skating really does enough damage to where, yeah. at the end of the day, what are they going to do? Well, I mean, like, oh, people... you did these scratches. Like, no, right, I mean, right. it's the free thought notion of actually using your car to break through some a fence. Well, that <laughs> yeah. part. Yeah. yeah. Again, the fence didn't get fucked up, really. Right. And and he actually he had his own lock. He, so he just relocked it when we left. Uh, <laughs> so <they> just, <laughs> so this key work? Yeah. Then they couldn't open it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't care. That's amazing. Because then the janitor's like, "Fuck! I've lost the lock. I don't have yeah. the right key." Yeah, it's yeah. true. It's their problem. Not on him. It's their problem. Yeah. Wow. But it is amazing to think you're there that long, and there's always cop cars in that part of Oceanside, like just rolling around, like that. Nobody even bothered us, like. And it's in like a residential zone yeah, too. Yeah, pretty much. Now it's like a full yuppie zone. Like right. it's not. Not the same. Huh. Gentrified. Yeah. Definitely gentrified. Crazy. Didn't you film Penny at that school too? The switchboard slide line? Yes. You did. That was pretty high epic. High five? Too. Uh, was that well, high five? I think it was, yeah. I got paid by high five. $500 to film Tom Penny's part. Wow. Oh, you filmed also at the high school as well? Oh, the Huntington High and everything? Uh, up the thing? Yeah, the back tails. That. Wow. Oh, that was <laughs> at the downhill school? Wow. Oh, you... Oh, uh... Earl Warren. Earl Warren, yep. Don Brown, he gave me 500 bucks. So like, can you, because if we're getting into Tom Penny stories. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think we are. Yeah. I think we are. I mean, a lot, a lot of people have had that experience, you know, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, I guess it's like one of my, yes, I achieved, you know, Tom Penny, fuck, in totally. his fucking heyday, doing the shit 
that everybody talks about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel really fortunate and blessed to have had, had that opportunity. And I thank Ian from Flip because, you know, I was friends with Ian in the 84 uh -huh. when those guys came out to San Diego and stayed at Del Mar. And him, Don Brown, and a couple other English guys, like, I really got along well with them. And that's who I stayed with when I went to England or Europe for in 88. And so we had this really good relationship. So when they came over, the Brits, the flip guys, uh -huh. I was I was the dude, their point guy, you know. And as far as taking photos, I mean, they knew I knew that they they were kind of using me to get things in the magazine. But like the very first day that they arrived, they came to Transworld, and they had convinced Jeff that he was gonna do he was gonna pop shove at the stairs at Oceanside High School. Oh yeah. yeah. For a street rod ad, like so, street rod was clothing like that tracker was doing across oh, okay. the street. So they were he was going to get an ad if he did this pop shove it, and so Ian had told him whatever, and I went there to shoot that. He did the pop shove it like in a couple of tries, and then was like, "Oh man, I think I could three sixty flip it." <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuck yeah, and I, I think Alfonso, Danny Mayer, and some other guy, Jeff Chase. They were skating the high school, like just skating around, and so they were there. They're like kind of at the top of the fence, like looking. And at that time, I think all, a lot of the American skaters like hated the flip guys from this, from this Radlands. They just thought that Tom Penny was like arrogant, and, like kind of a dick, mm -hmm. you know? Like, oh, the flip guys suck. They're they're mean. They don't like us. They won't talk. We don't like them. You know? Like there was this weird vibe going on. Mm -hmm. And I kind of knew about it, but whatever. So they watched Jeff do the 360 flip he did it once and he goes dodgy it was dodgy <laughs> right yeah. so then he did it again like within a you know two tries wow um dude that 360 flip was incredible he does it so right. good yeah and it was i mean yeah it was like boom 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 i mean i think i shot the photos and filmed it wow and that was it and those guys left like whoa <laughs> sure. is this what we have to do now yeah like, like they came it, to their hometown and just fucking right. killed their local spot mm -hmm. that's like yeah right and then it, i think that same year there was a contest in san jose and they were hanging out a lot with the, so this is jeff and tom and i mean rune probably hanging out a lot you know together and with ed templeton so there was a vibe at this contest where i think they were yelling at tom penny like i don't know who it was like some other I think it was you guys, girl team. Mm -hmm. Like there was a vibe because Jeremy was involved too, and like I don't think they there was some vibe with Jeremy, and so there was all this back and forth. And Tom was in this contest. I think he got like second and third place in this contest, mm -hmm. and there was like fuck that guy. Like I remember Markovich kind of maybe saying something like he was bummed, like uh -huh. just a weird vibe. Like and they weren't. Then Tom, if you know Tom, he was oblivious uh, to anything. I was gonna say yeah. Uh, like <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, he He's wasn't being just, he wasn't just, being rude. Zone. He was no, just in his own it, zone, probably. Yeah. Huh? I'm scared. Yeah, oh, doing you know, his like, thing. He's a problem. Yeah, what do you mean? yeah. <laughs> and I just thought it was like, wow, this is fucking, this is different. Mm -hmm. You know what what he's doing, like, and the way he's doing it, like, I'll do what if sh I'm there. Penny, dude, let's go. Yeah. And if I look back and I think about the amount of conversation we had, it would have probably been like maybe. 10 minutes <laughs> you know over like 10 or 15 times going out and shooting with him right you know like right. he just didn't talk like it was just and that's just the way he was all he cared about was smoking weed and skating mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how did it, they how did, did both well yeah. yeah so would you take him to these spots or or yeah, yeah? it's like hey like I got the city college stuff in san diego like i remember him getting dropped off at my house and i'm like all right let's go and it was him and jordan richter Wow. amazing we drove down to city amazing. college there was like and i knew jordan since he was a kid so we conversated but tom just sat in the back and didn't say a thing <laughs> and then he just kind of like skated off in front of us and i you know i'm trying to keep up and we're going through the because we didn't know what to skate and i think he came out there was like a 10 stair somewhere in the school and he just it just happened to be right in front of me and just kick flipped it <laughs> like i'd never seen it before and he just cool while just cruising yeah. down it. Like, wow yeah. In just full natural, natural time in his yeah. natural habitat. Dude, yeah. Wow. That's incredible. You got to like facilitate that whole process. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like there wasn't a process. Yeah. Like, well, you yeah. just went and. You just, went and you just set up and okay. <laughs> the downhill school line took a little longer. 
like that wore me out pretty much. You know, like the, well, I think you will haul ass yeah. down that thing, yeah, dude. That thing is dude. scary. And, yeah, and he never told me what he was gonna do. <laughs> oh, he did it. <laughs> it was, just well, follow me. He's just going down here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just going down here. Would his line change every time, or was he doing the same tricks? He was doing the same trick. Like I think that he didn't get to the backside tail side until he did it. Okay. Oh wow! You First, know, I can't remember what he fell on, but he would fall on something. You know, like in the line each time. And then mm. once he got all three of the tricks before it and came around the corner and the thing was there, it was a backside tail slow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Boom. Dude. I always Dude. almost like tripped Legend. out <clears throat> how gnarly the kickflip was off like the forest there because he was going as fast as you could possibly yeah, yeah, yeah. go and he would clear it by like 20 feet, oh, it looked like. And it was bolts. Like, yeah. It was, like, <laughs> I don't think man, I hadn't seen that kind of skating. Like at that speed and and just that precision, like and how he was doing things, like it was all new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, you mentioned the the line at Oceanside High. Yeah. The film, like, I mean, that was done super quick too. But I had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> what was the line? Uh, switch flip. Switch flip. Switch, switch board. Boards. And then mm -hmm. cruise around. Come out forward. So, yep. And, and then, then kick flip the. There was like a bump over a sidewalk gap. Mm -hmm. And like, so I had to set up a board at the bottom of the stairs, like so and. So I kind of was like walking between the, the switch flip and then the board side walking down the stairs. Yeah. Following yeah. him and then jump on a board and just like try to keep up with him. And it was just like, wow. Magical, wow. bro. Yeah. yeah. Magical. I mean, he's definitely probably one of, I mean, like, it's just like insane how like mm. that moment in time, I mean, you, you can't duplicate it. Like, you no. Can't. Yeah. No. What about Carl's bag gap? Did you film the switch front side flip? No. Who filmed that one? Uh, what was it in? <sighs> Wasn't it Etnies or no? I want to say. It was say definitely, it was like the last thing he did. Well. Oh, Ryo, he's here. sure it wasn't a flip video? I don't think it was. It S? Was, I don't, it was in the S video, I'm pretty sure. Like in Medic Modi, because they reused all the old footage. But hmm. I can't remember which one. It, I thought Could it was. Could have been in a Transville video for all I know. I, I should know this, to be honest. But you I should. can't. <laughs> Barely. Barely. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I mean, and it's funny because that was like, did he switch flip it? No, it's just front side flip. Okay. That, like, he was supposed to 360 flip it. Like, that was, I mean, I think one of the things they came to America to do. It's funny. Mm. And this is Je uh, Ian and Fox. You know, like, they were like, oh, we're going to do, they ha we have these spots. We're going to take these guys to these spots. And they're going to do these tricks. There's yeah. an agenda. Yeah. 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 And I think it maybe took too long. Like, I don't think. Tom really ever wanted to go to high, um, Carlsbad High. Mm. Like I think he felt like people had done stuff there. Jeremy Ray, like there was all these things that had been done there, and, and because he kind of, I think, might have been getting the idea that people were thinking a certain way about him, that he was just that he was the one to go into these spots to one up people. Oh. When he, I don't think he gave a shit. Right. He would just end up, and then he would just start skating. Yeah, know? yeah. And I think that was an S ad. And I think yeah. Atiba shot the photos. Because that was during Etnies, I feel like. Really? Yeah, because he was wearing some Etnies, I'm pretty sure, in that hmm. switch front side flip. But because I, it's funny because you're like, where, what video is it in? I saw it in a 4 oh. and one like, uh, repurposed. Could be his 4 and one industry flip. It might have been that, actually. I think you're right. I think it was a 4 and one industry section for flip. Hmm. But, it had to have been somewhere else because I, I, I didn't watch 4 and ones but I I it was repurposed know. like a bunch yeah. of videos like throughout time. Why wouldn't it be? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's incredible. Beautiful. Especially if you look it's how beautiful. that was maybe the biggest thing he ever jumped down. I don't remember him skating, or actually that's not true at all. Actually, never mind. I'll take that back. He kicked the door some huge rails, front side flip rails. But Police station. Oh yeah, down Huntington on Beach? Huntington Beach. Yeah, that was pretty big. Did you yeah. film that? Filmed it, and well, I filmed. Fuck, I think I just filmed a kick flip over it, and then I shot photos of the front side flip. Hmm. So I want to say Manzuri filmed the frontside flip. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Manzuri was around back then too, huh? Were you there over the chain down the bank day? Oh, no. gosh. No. That, 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 that was Skin. I think spot. Skin filmed all that. Every bit. I wow. watched that the other day randomly. That was a... The Instagram cult of Tom is so... I mean, like, a, yeah. so something pops up on there. I'm like, I, I, I still can't believe it. Yeah. It's like back then... What year was this? Oh, my God. It's crazy. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I wish I was there for the chance. I remember, I can, you know, I vividly remember Skin coming back with, the, you know, like, oh, man, you know, like just yeah, <laughs> all lit up about this thing. You got to see this. Right. And, you know, we all went in this room and like fucking watched it and was just like, because I had been there with Deerdeck and Pat Duffy. Mm -hmm. 
maybe somebody else around the same time and you know they had trouble doing like a kick like a, i think rob did a switch heel over it maybe okay. but nothing more you know it was like one trick and it was like i'm out of here this thing's fucked yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i'm gonna catch the chain and fucking go to my face Ooh, really and skin's really. telling me about like oh he did like this 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 i mean i think he had called me the night before and i was like i gotta see this you know and watching it like was just like because we're watching the raw tape right and there's not it's not like you're watching it for an hour Bales you watch shit, like yeah. 20 minutes six minutes <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, wait what How? Oh, uh, yeah oh, crazy i love that. Say, he cuss coming from europe and then you're in the states like you just got the energy like i'm fucking here let's let's go and he's yeah. just like presented spots and he's just fucking killing it i'm sure and he never drove like it was yeah. just like chauffeured to the spot like, what a legend yeah i do straight up <laughs> what dude a legend yeah that's dude. Incredible. love hearing the heath I mean, kerr chart go ahead is it kind of in a like it's funny to think about now how people are treated and i mean if imagine him now if like mm. that stuff kind of happened the way skateboarding is now right the amount of like fanfare yeah, or sure. cash or Instagram, whatever that would be thrown at whatever, the dude like yeah. here you are the fucking god of all right no doubt you know and he probably definitely would have hit away oh you never know yeah yeah that's true. I don't think he never was that guy for the limelight or the spotlight. No, it wasn't like, about any of that. I, yeah. but he, the the rad thing about Tom Penny though is like I, he knew everything about skateboarding though. He was such a fan of skateboarding. Like when I met him, he was like, "Oh, hey, Chris Robert." Like I was like, "How do you know me Same. right now? This is <laughs> yeah. crazy yeah. that but Tom Penny knows. You shouldn't know who I am. You know what I mean? So like, do you I think just, he does his, the Instagram stuff? I mean, oh, his own his Instagram. Own? I don't know. I can't say. I mean, uh, I'd always uh, heard that he that his girlfriend, whatever. Maybe. Does yeah, I think his stuff, girlfriend yeah. does. Yeah. Then I'll get, uh, you know, when I'll post something for his birthday or whatever. Mm -hmm. and it, oh, thanks, Dave. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, he's actually he's talking to me. Right. <laughs> he remembers my name. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> like, and that and that's weird. Me to be fanning out on like, you know, I'm the older dude. Like, it's just weird. Like, yeah. But I, I really relish the fact that I was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. And it happened like right in front of me. Like I was like, "It's wow. beautiful." Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's incredible skateboarding, man. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I've gotten the pleasure to skate with Tom a few times. He's so, I mean, even in the later years, still amazing. Still has that that aura. Yeah. Imagine all the Brits that got to see him and you know Ooh, oh, wow. those wow. contests yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah, gnarly. Good God. I got to throw it down with him a little bit in Copenhagen, probably yeah, maybe. Seven years ago, give or take. Oh yeah, and he was. We had conversation. I was like, "What am I talking?" Yeah, he's Tom cool, yeah, man. He's cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, you think he came out of that shell to some degree? You know what I mean? Mm. I think as you get older and you're not doing as much right stuff as you were you doing back then. Yeah, I don't know what he was doing, but <laughs> legend. Give though. me some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it was working. Um, I would love to because I think we missed a little piece of Trans World. I want to go back to Trans World really quickly because um, love that place. I, dude, I did. It's a great yeah. place. Great place. Yeah. Iconic magazine. But time. I think because we talked about it on here uh, on our experience show a lot too is um, just like before they switched to digital back in the day, film. Uh, I'm sure just buying the film is expensive. I'm sure processing it is expensive for those magazines, but also like shooting like sequences and doing all that because we don't. We always we all have the stories. Like me and Jerron for sure photographer with a pile of film next to him <laughs> shooting the sequence <laughs> us feeling like shit yeah. you know what i mean and then uh, that's funny because that's the, that's i mean i dealt with that for uh, many years yeah you know, as yeah. far as like the skater was the one that always felt like the guilt i'm sorry i'm sorry I'm totally like, Dude, it's okay i get this fucking shit for free i mean i don't know about the photographer whatever photographer you have but yeah most of them like the ones that worked for us we were giving them bricks of film you know right. like you're doing this and here's fucking this much film we kind of i mean i know the skating so like mm -hmm. you know that like oh you're shooting with him you need fucking 50 rolls <laughs> you know? that was me whatever that was me and i mean i i have i know who has my record of um, rolls you know i mean i remember are gonna, it are we it's gonna funny. divulge yeah it was deer deck deer deck yeah how many rolls 39 39 no no 19 excuse me oh, oh. 39 i don't know what i would 19, 19 doesn't rolls. seem too bad it didn't seem too bad at all no no, no. Damn. so it was 94 go back and it's city college and he was trying nollie frontside nose slides on that city college rail mm. oh shit. okay which you know this, that's the same rail that ronnie bertino switched back lip mm -hmm. yeah um and he would get into it get into it get into it i mean it was just like roll after roll after roll until he just fucking gave up and it was like 
Oh, he gave up. He didn't yeah. even. Yeah, it was done. It was. Oh, wow. it never happened. Right, right. And back then, that was a hard trick. Sure. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Ninety four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even if it was a five star, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. and that's why to me it was curve. worth it. Like, I'm like, yeah, Rob, it's okay. Dude. Don't right. fucking freak out. Like, don't lose. It. It's fine. Like, they're paying for the roles. I'm not. It's fine. Yeah. But it's just mental as well. Yeah. You're looking over there and actually get fucking don't get the, throw those things out of here. So I'm not oh, seeing that, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. Do you have to leave yeah. the boxes right next yeah, to you? Yeah. Dude. But just reminding I mean, me, like, <laughs> I guess every photographer was different back then too, because I know, especially sequences, like some photographers would like you know get the first half of the trick if it was like a tech trick, and then only shoot like the second half of the piece trick them, piece them oh, together kind of piece them together you know so there, i think there was tricks of the trade going on there <laughs> yeah. you know for uh like i said every photographer was probably different you want, you want to hear a hot one about piecing yeah i'd love uh, to goes to heath and okay first i, I want to say it was his first birdhouse ad mm-hmm. um back lip shove it korea high school or korea school down in point loma okay. oh wow we went there and he's like hey i don't want to shoot a sequence i just want to film it Okay. Or no, I just want to shoot a secret. No, f- no, it was, okay, I want to just film it. Mm. He did it in five tries. I'm like, fuck, well, we should shoot a sequence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, why not? Right? Okay. So we're down 12 rolls. Wow. You know, so that's three tries a roll, so 36 times. I can't do it. Fuck, whatever. Maybe we should piece it together. And I'm like, yeah, let's do that. I mean, this is the first time I didn't even thought of like, oh yeah, we can piece it together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the like, first time oh. happening. Yeah. Yeah. You do a back lift, I even and, thought then, of that. and then you just come out forward. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Um, we did it, and we, it was an ad. It came out, and then all of a sudden we noticed that like he had and skaters back then I, I think would just do full board grip tapes. Yeah. He had a line, like he had like a little space like in his grip tape. Mm-hmm. It oh. never changed, on the sequence. What do you mean it never changed? Well, so he's doing a back lip shove it, right? Yeah. So it would go from oh. the back to the front. <laughs> it never changed. So you got this piece together sequence where it went back lip, shove it, land, roll away, or the, the, the line, line is, is always in the same place. Wow. Yeah. There's been a couple flubs like that. Yeah, we weren't professionals. No. <laughs> we're no. What about the Guy Mariano cover? Or uh, you have to ask Ortiz about that. Get uh, him on here. Okay. What the switch pop shove fakey? Yes, combo? switch pop shove with nose grind. Yeah, I, it, I think we talked about it the other day. I think. Yeah. But like, God damn it, trans world. <laughs> well, you mean like? I always tripped that like, you never saw the footage, but like there oh, was. I didn't see. I didn't even know you didn't see the footage. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember seeing I, it. I, no. I don't remember seeing that. No. Footage. But, but like motherfucker. No. But Ortiz there was like a get... dude in the background in one frame, and there wasn't a dude in the background in the other frame. That's damn what. <laughs> well, listen, Big Brother. I mean, they had the a wheel. The wheel. Markovich's the, the, wheel. The, the floating wheel. Yeah. What was that? Markovich doing an ollie on a mini ramp. Mm-hmm. And there was like trees and they photoshopped him higher, I'm told. Oh, okay. They always used to do But they left the shit. wheel there. Yeah, you can see his blurry wheel. In the <laughs> like they, they I love it. it, dude. How do you miss that? How do you miss that? You're, I, mean, I mean, I would imagine back then, like, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have to use Photoshop or anything back then. Like it was somebody else was doing it that... You know, as as I started using Photoshop, it's gotten better and better and easier and easier to do mm-hmm, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like back then, I would imagine it would just be this fucking four hour long fucking. Uh, they were doing that shit on purpose. They were doing a lot of things. That's remember, what they'll tell you I now. Well, dude, I remember. I remember being in the background at a uh, fucking Slam City Jam, and bro, my neck was stretched like right. Oh. Fucking like <laughs> I don't know, dude. It didn't. I remember look that. Right. I remember that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> did it look right bro it stretched my neck it looked crazy so I'm like they were already doing shit like that on like a very but subtle but that moment. one that Mark which one I think was a total like I think it was a I think Rick Kosick talked about it when yeah. he was here I think he said something about it he didn't know or it was it was fu- a fuck up it happens yeah we yeah. got our fuck ups I have a Tom Penny fuck up what was the Tom Penny fuck his up his cover what do you mean what oh the front blunt that's right. Ah, yay! <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <Got you. laughs> what happened with that? What happened with that? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I was there to shoot some Canadian kid. Do you remember his name? Or was trying to ride for Bert or a flip? Fuck, I can't remember his name. Uh, Hot for a second, and then they he didn't. Andrew know. Gordon. Yes. Okay. Boom. Yeah. yeah. yeah I love you. <laughs> <laughs> he knows so they wanted me to come shoot Andrew Gordon, and he to do he was going to do something on that curved ledge in Huntington. Okay, I don't think he knew he was going to do anything on that curved ledge, <laughs> in Huntington, but this is what I was told: like come up to the spot where he's, Andrew's going to to me tail slide. I, I'm just guessing something like that. I'd never even seen the spot. Yeah, I'll tail slide for you. Blah blah blah. 
he wouldn't do anything. So Tom just shows up, right? And Andrew's there, like, all nervous and crazy, like, I don't want to. And you could tell he was, like, not into doing anything. Uh-huh. Tom's like, oh, what's up? Immediately just, like, goes, gets onto it, 5 grinds, 180 out. Like, the whole fucking thing just <laughs> rides away, does that. Oh, I think I'll confront Blunt this. Oh, my God. And just starts trying it, right? And this was in the day of pagers, so he's he does, like, five where he like slides the whole thing comes off and just kind of like foot bails it like just walks off and like dude you're fucking doing this gets a page uh-huh oh god go and just leaves that's it yeah <laughs> what oh, and i'm like all right and then ian's like or it was either ian or fox one of them was like oh he'll come back and get that and I'm like, you know it's, i'll make sure he does that i'm like all right I get the photos back i'm like fuck these things are sick like this would be great you know you, I think back then you were always trying to beat the other because there was six magazines, mm-hmm. you know. So we got to get the best cover. Like our cover has to be better. Like this is going to be great cover. So you're sure he's going to go back and make it. You're going to make right. sure. <laughs> yeah, we're filming a video. Like it's going to happen. Well, Tom Penny, he leaves. He doesn't. He leaves America and doesn't come back. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he was gone. I mean, as when the cover came, but up to the, up to him leaving, like it was at print. It was. It came out. Hey, has Tom made that? Oh, no, Tom's in France. <laughs> I don't think he's coming back. And so he never made it. Um, right. And I always felt kind of guilty, but then at the same time, you know, you got to the point where it was like a couple years later, like, because videos weren't coming out as quickly, so you didn't know. It took a few years. Mm-hmm. Where's that footage? Right. Fuck, I don't know. Yeah. It's not my fault. It's a rad it's a, photo, though. Yeah. It's so I, sick, dude. It's yeah, People still buy that print off me. They're like, hey, can I get that? And I have to tell them, like, you know it's a bail. Wow. Yeah, I don't care. That might still that, a good photo. That's probably the best bail photo yeah. of all time. I mean, well, I mean, I'm there's sure there's a lot a more lot. that you don't know <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's <laughs> true. No doubt. Because you know, before the, the '80s and all, there was fucking so much stuff that wasn't made, or you know, the yeah. trick might have been made. Well, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, Ryan Desenzo actually did that recently. He, the he, faker? He did the front blunt to oh, the, just recently on, the on that ledge. Lid. Yeah, mm. he popped out. I think he put O to Tom. It took Penny that for, long. Yeah. <laughs> but that thing's gnarly, dude. Oh, I mean, what? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, in 96, I think it was. Something like that, yeah. God, like, I look, would look at it like that. This is insane. This thing's curved. How are you? And he had so much control on it. Like, it was just so, like. That's so sick, though. That, that's commit. You're committing all the way on that trick. Yeah. On that ledge. Super gnarly. But, uh, but yeah, I don't think he even broke a sweat. <laughs> Where did he get paged to? He's in another. <laughs> He's in another well, country. <laughs> like where? No, this. He, where is he going to get weed? Oh, I knew it was weed. Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go. It's the only thing that. Would... And this is when he was living with Muska, so it was him and Muska. So okay. it was, you know, I'm sure it was Muska paging him. Like, hey, I got the bag. I need your. I need your fifth. I need your half. I need you to fucking okay. pay half for this thing. Their yeah. S shoes, their S shoes hadn't come out yet. Oh my <laughs> god! Now, he was riding for S then, correct? Yeah, I think he was in the South 23s at that point. Okay, yeah, the yeah. brown. I feel like tan. that was around the time when the Muska shoe came out. Because I mean, they were all like in cahoots. Oh yeah, all those dudes were him and Bob, and I mean, all in this bubble. I mean, mm-hmm. they were the all stars. Yeah, they were the all stars. Still what about, are. That time. What about any like Costin? Like, did you shoot him a lot back then? I shot him pretty early. Like, oh, so yeah. before he moved to L.A. Like, I mean, my best story about Eric would be, and again, like it would be something that I wouldn't have done as a teenager. With the cold call a magazine and be like, hey, can somebody come out and shoot with me? Oh, you know, wow. Like, and again, this is before you, you, what, no cell phones, no text. You had to call somebody at some business, you know, the front desk answers, hello, you're a <laughs> Some lady, you know, and he just has to go, like, hey, can you get Dave Swift? I want to talk to him. <laughs> the lady's like, page over the intercom, Dave Swift, pick up line two. Wow. <laughs> it's Eric Costin. I'm like, who fuck what I mean, <laughs> all right and you know pick it up and he's like hey um metaver from union wheels wants me to shoot an ad can you come and shoot me and i'm like sure what, what's your who what? okay uh, really yeah and we went to i think the big bear curbs in oceanside and i think he did a backside nose blunt shove it out wow which are the big bear where, where which curb which is it um well again this is 90 the early 93 okay so it was just like a basic like was it a higher red no, curb was it, it the one he red was... it was just it was just white oh, he was really? on girl early 99 about to be on girl so that's he was like still 101 101 
one. Yeah. Mm. So he had these big, like yellow fucked pants. Yeah. Or shorts. Shorts that were longer. Some chuck red, chucka red boots. Red chuckas. Yep. One on one hat. I mean, oh, he's filming falling down right there. Falling down. That's so For sure. sick yeah. though. Fuck yeah. And so he did a backside nose blunt and then shove it out. I'm trying to think of what ledge. Right, not even a ledge. It wasn't a ledge. It was a curb. <laughs> is that red? Is it a red curb? curb? Yeah. yeah. It was no, red? it wasn't red. No. I'm thinking of the one in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, the, the one the in the higher line. one. Yeah. Maybe it's in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So you went and shot him. What was it? Back nose blunt. Shove, shove it out. Shove out. Okay. Yeah. You know, and again, I was early for me in street skating. Like, and that was way beyond what Ron and Jeremy were doing. You know, this was like, holy shit. This, you know, I think him and Frank Corrado were kind of the same time for me. Mm-hmm. As far as like those, all of a sudden it became those two guys for a little while that I was shooting. And Frank more than Eric. Cause Eric again, only stayed in San Diego for six months and then he moved. Like he was living with Alf. Yeah. yeah. Alfonso and then, Ron. Nice. Moved out. Mm-hmm. Um, so very few times with him, but that was like the first and that was a union ad, a union ad. So and then I think we went to some rail in Temecula, some double set, and he did a front side board slide on it. Mm. Like, just kind of random. Like, yeah. But he was super quiet and shy. But, like, f- for the six months that he was there, he would just kind of call me every like, Can you pick me up and we'll go shoot somewhere? You know, and he would just, and I'd pick him up and be like, Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> like, that mean I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And, I think, and later I would just think that he was only asking because so he'd get a ride to some spot That's because it. he didn't have a car and Alf was gone. Was he what? filming these tricks too, or was it just going out and shooting? I can't remember anybody filming. I can't remember anybody. Oh, okay. Cause I'm thinking like because I I love the Union Wheels video. I thought that was amazing. His part in that. Do you think that was in there? I don't know. That's why I'm trying to visualize this this curb white curb thing. I don't. I'll, I'll text it to you. Yeah. yeah. I'll look that one up. <laughs> yeah. That's so sick, though, dude. Yeah. Wait, so that was your first time seeing... Were you how, Were you pretty impressed? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, him just skating before he tried that trick. I think he did something else, too, but, like, I, I don't even think I'd ever seen anybody in, do a backside nose blunt slide. Mm-hmm. You know, that was, like, the first time I'd ever even seen it. Oh, wow. I've, I've saw pictures of Matt Hensley, you know, still photos. Um, who else was probably good at that trick back then? I mean, Look. Gav did kickflip back oh, yeah. nose blunt slide on a and curb. And Caballero back then. And Caballero. Back yeah. nose blunt. Yeah. But see, I don't think I was paying attention to that. I mean, but that was in pack a lot. Was that pack a lot? Yeah. 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 That was in that blind promo. Yeah. Yeah. Because at that time, I think there was a, um, the the Rocco's companies mm-hmm. weren't in Transworld because of oh, the controversy. had a battle with Larry yeah. over some blockhead ad. and like So we were, I don't want to say we were instructed, but it was like, don't go shooting with those guys. Mm. And they had they had a the fucking all star lineup. Yeah, you know, they had time. all the best dudes. Yeah. You know? And then when Plan B was part of it, it was like even more like, how do we not shoot with these fuckers? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? yeah. Straight up, you can't. But we were fortunate to have again like guys like Frank Harada, who are kind of to me pretty overlooked when you kind of go back in, to that sure. time. Yeah, like he was good. You know, he, again, early, but really fucking good. Like we're just like, holy mm-hmm. shit, this guy. And, you know, like. I don't know if you're, you mean, you're familiar with like the skateboard hall of fame, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of those dudes get overlooked and shit like that where their period of time and what they were doing. I agree. You know, like yeah. how are these guys not in the fucking skateboard hall of fame? You, know, you got this fucking old ass dude, like <laughs> yeah, five yeah. old ass dudes and not one. Frank <laughs> yeah. the fuck? I feel you. I feel you, on that. I feel you. For, for sure. Yeah. For and sure. It's be- I'm not, I'm not begging anybody, but you know what I mean? Like hmm. there has to be more people that made skateboarding what it is for us now you know and again i'm not i mean i'm one of the old ass dudes but like i was able i'm again more you know i'm so happy that i would have been that guy in 1991 that was like fuck street skating streets are for cars like fuck that shit (laughs) and then going forward it's like i was able to see like all these things happen you know from the time that that actually started Mm -hmm. you know like uh, seeing the first real Roddy Mullen, sure, he did a kickflip, but I saw people doing kickflips when they were moving, you know, yeah. going fast, moving, right. like, actually what we're doing now, or what people are doing now, like, you know, the, the start of it, which is, like, that's, you know, my swan song, right? Love it, sure. yeah. And how the evolution in yeah. a short amount of time, like, just fucking went crazy, mm-hmm. you know? We talk about that often yeah. on the show, it's like, these videos would come out, I mean, the blind video days, but then you have, like, the Plan B videos, they're coming out back to back, year after year, you know? It's probably a year apart. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's so quick day. and so rapid. Yeah, and dude's like Duffy. like Oh, my God. Yeah, skating in the rain and just fucking just He's not in the Hall of Fame. I was, 
How is Pat Duffy not in the Hall of Fame? I agree. <laughs> no, there's there's a lot of them that get overlooked, man. I don't know too much about the Skateboarding Hall of Fame. I gotta look more into that. Is there I, a time who frame? Votes, yeah, who yeah. votes for this Hall of Fame? Who? We yeah. gotta get on the committee, Dubs. Who's uh, hey, <laughs> who's voting? Hey, I was on the committee. Uh, Were you? Well, yeah. Uh-huh. Like it, basically, it would just be here's the ballot, here's the people. Okay. okay. You get five. Whatever. Did you ever you check Frank Rod's name? It wasn't. He was never on the ballot. Oh, I might have written him in. Okay. And you know, and, and I don't think I voted last year. Like mm. I wasn't on. I guess I'm not on anymore. I'm not cool enough. Maybe, <laughs> after, maybe after the nine club, I'll be back. Oh, on maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Or maybe um, you'll never get another ballot ever right. again. <laughs> right. <It'll be> <laughs> How do so you choose it. that? Like, yeah, do you have to have only five skaters can make it each year or something? Or yeah, I don't. I mean, know. what it's I would from see different would, years. What too. I would see would be a list, yeah, they right? Seventies, eighties, nineties. Yeah, girls. And, you know, they have these different categories, and I guess with the seventies guys, because everybody's dying. Like, you know, people are dying. They're getting old. They're dying. Like, mm. they gotta rapidly kind of ramp that up. But oh. like, you know, to only have two people from the nineties, like. I think yeah. it was Muska and Kareem last yeah, time. Last I was year. like, right. yeah, those guys deserve it, but like, there's so many. Like, Definitely. Yeah, especially from that era. Yeah. Oh, the 90s especially. Yeah. yeah. It time. was moving quick. There was a lot of heavy hitters. A lot of heavy hitters. Yeah, you bring up Pat Duffy. It's like, geez. Yeah, how could that not be? You know, yeah. I mean, like, he is, to me, the definition of Hall of Fame for street skating. As no far doubt. as that yeah. era goes, you no know, doubt. like right. Jeremy Klein. For sure. sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. I mean, I was stoked to see Guy got it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. There's there, there's all, a lot of deserving people that got yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think anybody but, that's in there doesn't yeah, deserve it. But there's a lot of people that are definitely getting kind of slept on, for sure. Mm. Maybe just based on the way that they, they, they do the I hear about all these things. I mean, the, the, the Music Hall of Fame. The I mean, there's so many Hall of Fames that people always get left out of. You know, skateboarding is one of them. But they're not guys. crying, though, I guess. You know, Pat Duffy doesn't really care. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, he will as he grow as you know what I mean, but like oh, everyone respects his skateboarding so much. Oh, it's yeah. like it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Dude. So it's like your Hall of Fame or not, you're still getting the praise. Dude. Straight up, you know what I mean. We should start giving awards out. We'll, we'll do nine, our own the Hall nine of club fame. award, yearly yeah. award. Oh well, we should do one, every- one person a year. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> we'll do We're gonna leave out some people. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a lot. We'll do a lot. That was something we'll I was involved. I was involved in too. What's that? It was the Trans World Awards? Oh, oh yeah, the one you have right there. Transfer which awards. Roger won one. Oh, he congrats, Rog. <laughs> but which, which one is this one? The left one. Oh, that's Rog. Oh wait, this one. Yeah, the old ass one. Read it. Mm. Tell me what it says. Let's see. It says two two thousand riders poll best all around skater Heath Kirchart. Hey, there now. You go. <laughs> Would you ever figure Heath Kirchart to be the best all around skater? I mean, uh, he'd have my vote. I don't actually, know. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. the mega ramp. Well, that's, 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 <laughs> that's not two thousand. Uh, that's not. That's not a. Uh, what did he do? Backside three sixty, over it. What did he do? Uh, yeah, he did on the mega ramp. Yeah, he did yeah. backside three sixty. Backside three sixty. But so that, and there's a funny story. And I guess we can. It's like a coming out party, right? We're gonna okay. fucking throw out all the fucking. Let's things. go, Heath. Again, it goes back to how he could just come and talk. Hey, what do you think about this? You know, like. So he was like, you know. I'll never be like the on the riders pool or the readers, but I'll never get best street skater. What if I get you think I could get best all around skater? <laughs> 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 I was like, wait, what? What do you mean? He's like, you know, like it'd just be funny, right? If I got best all around skater? I was like, Yeah, that'd be really funny. What do you want to do? And we you know, every year we'd do this article with like this readers poll street skater, mm-hmm. readers poll fucking this and you know, all the different things. And I was like, well, how will we do it? He's like, I don't know. Like, we'll get other people to dress like me and we'll, and they're doing other things. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's a pretty good idea. You know, yeah. Yeah. Again, I'm more of, I love the hijinks. Like, the, I mean, just the funny shit in skateboarding, like the creativity. Like, that's what I'm more about rather than the fucking seriousness. Sure. Like, it was like, yeah, that'll be fun. Mm. He's like, well, do you think you can just put me in there? I'm like, I'm not in charge of the voting. Like, my assistant's in charge. You have to convince her. And it was this girl, Tanya. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and he, goes, he just goes, what can I give you to put me in? What do you want from me that if if I, if you make me the best all around skater? Like, because she control, she like would get the votes. Okay. <laughs> I really need some new shoes. What kind? And he told, you know, she told him, and he next day he came back with these fucking shoes. And next thing you know, you know, he was a best all around. <laughs> <laughs> 
I had told him like, <laughs> just like that. if you can convince her and do this, I mean, like, I'm just gonna. I, I yeah. think it's funny, and like, I'll do the article. But at least he had a plan going into it, right. and he just didn't want to take. So yeah. we went. Oh, I love it. And we had to shoot. Like, let's say we shot. I shot Tony Hawk. <laughs> you know, 540 in you know, like an all blue. Heath like outfit what he was wearing at the time like, <laughs> right. all, like just blue pants blue dark blue shirt black hair like a wig mm -hmm. and he did a 540 padless over the channel at this vert park in uh, San Diego pair Willander we had him do freestyle <laughs> in a fucking mall wearing the same outfit like he did a fucking like a handstand hand flip so that was a sequence I had to do a sweeper in the combi okay like, wearing the same outfit <laughs> And then there was a Heath Street shot, and that was his best all around. That was his best. <laughs> and I told him, like, the only, like, because then the awards were coming up. Like, it was like the magazine was going to come out, and then he had to come and get the award. And I was like, you have to come and get the award. Oh, no, I don't want to come and get the award. I don't really care. I was like, dude, you can't make me go up on the fucking stage <laughs> right. and get the award. If you do, you're not getting the I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> like, if I have to fucking accept this award for you, you're not getting it ever. And he's like, all right. And so, you know, he, he comes I mean, time. obviously you have the award. Right. Comes so. the time, like, you know, we're in, it's in Hollywood in this like theater. So it's the second time we did the awards mm -hmm. and, you know, they do the street scare, they do the, the, the reader's poll, they do all these things. They get that one and I have to go up there and Heath, is Heath Kirchhart here? You know, and, and I can see Rune Glifberg, like, he's like, what the fuck? Heath Kirchhart best all around. It should be Shanny. It should be Shanny. <laughs> he's like mad. And I'm like. Dude, it's a fucking joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, but he was like, like super bummed. Like, and I was like, I mean, we talked about it later, but I was like, yeah, it was, it was just this funny thing because you know the magazine comes out and then now everybody gets it. Oh, that's ha, 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 funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, because like, how, a, could, how yeah. can you take yourself so serious? Like, I just didn't see how a magazine could take themselves so seriously as mm -hmm. to not do cool shit. Like, sure, right. When there's an opportunity, like best all around, that's kind of a dumb thing. It's in pretty State funny. Yeah. yeah. So let's have fun, fun with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's pretty so great so I still have the trophy okay he wait so he never showed did he show he asked me for it like a couple years later do you think I can get that trophy and I was like nope no nope. he didn't show up he didn't show Damn. up bro. Shani would have been best all it'll around be in my will, <laughs> yeah. it'll be in my will for him <laughs> like I mean, you don't get this thing in a box. Like, yeah. Where, where, where's this from? <laughs> just shows oh, yeah, up. Dave Swift just died. Oh. So was it, any, was it just the sequences of this stuff, or was yeah, it yeah. actual? Did you guys film it, too? Because uh, wouldn't they, in the Transport that, Awards, wouldn't they the, would play the videos? I think the next year we started playing more oh, video okay. stuff. Like the first two years, so the first one was in Canada. When like, really? Yeah, when Shorty's won all the awards, pretty much, Muska. And okay, I don't it was all that. that. Rodney Mullen. That was kind of the deal, right? Rodney Mullen would always win... The ones that the readers voted for, mm -hmm. like for what, like, no, how, is, how, who even sees Rodney Mullen skate? Love like Rodney. it was just yeah, crazy. Yeah. Love him. And I think that's what he was like. I'll never win the the readers poll because everybody just wants Rodney Mullen. Uh. And so, all right, we'll figure this out. And that's, that's how that came about. <laughs> and yeah, so the first two years there wasn't video that went along with the awards, Got you. Or, okay. or, or whatever there was. It might have just been like clips from different mm -hmm. shit of right. those guys. Right. Then it became more produced as things went on. Like when we went when we started doing it at the. Um, Ford. Outdoor place, yeah. Ford. Ford. Yeah. Then it kind of was like, and that's when I like when I had to go up on the stage at that place. I was like, oh. fucking armpits, sweating through the suit, like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I mean, I would get. Well, yeah, I'm drunk. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> those were awesome premieres yeah. though, and awards. They were, they they were, were so they were fun, fun to go to. Fun. But I mean, getting up on stage. I mean, that's not the most. You know, they're pretty rowdy. The yeah. crowd. You know. Well, it got it progressively year after year. It would get rowdy. I'm glad that. But you know, we left there in 2003, and I, that was like the one thing I'm glad I didn't ever have to do again. Right. You know, and it was funny <laughs> to watch Skin do it, like, because he was the most opposite of wanting to do any of that shit. Like, if when we were doing stuff, like, oh, no, I'll just, you know, I, he wouldn't be part of any of it. Like, I'm not going to go up on any stage, you know, like, and it was funny to see him actually have to do that. Yeah. I was like, whoa, look at Skin. Grant, look at Skin on stage. <laughs> like, That's amazing. Wow. So you left Transworld when? September 2003. You know the date? What time was it? I know my birthday, September 15th. <laughs> but yeah. It but, was right around my birthday. Yeah. Um, we all, like, so there was me and Grant, Atiba, mm -hmm. and then a bunch of photographers. So the photographers weren't really, they didn't have to be there to quit. They were just, oh, okay. like, it was John Humphreys, Brian Ueda, 
somebody else. Mm. Um, but just like I, you know, we all three of us, me, Grant, and Atiba, walked into this guy's office and like, we're 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 gonna quit. That's it. What? And this guy had just come in. You know, he. The, the long story is, is that Grant always talked. You know, from 1998 to till we left, he was mm-hmm. always like, "We gotta start our own mag. We need to do this." You know, it was always like, "Yeah, Grant." <laughs> <laughs> how would we ever do that that's right. impossible and you know so years of hearing that whatever but things were kind of good like especially for me like i was in charge like if any anybody outside of skateboarding had a had a question for skateboarding they come to me like hey mm. what do you think about this and i'd be like yeah maybe we can do that maybe we can't like mm. but it was getting to the point where there was a lot of corporate people coming in from New York that were like, didn't care about skateboarding. They were just like, we'll just sell whatever. Can you do this? And I was like, no, that sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, they were treating it like snowboarding and Mm -hmm. I already saw what was going on. It was like, this is going to be terrible for skateboarding. How was the mag doing at that time? It was huge. It was like, you know, right around that time that they were 400 pages, 400 pages, you know? So, and, and those magazines were making like, so a 400 page magazine was pulling in about a million dollars in advertising an issue. Wow. So 12 issues, $12 million. Right. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you had, they had like Army, Milk, you had like all these average, I mean, any, everything. You had everything. those, but right. like skateboarding was, I mean, it was 80% of it was skateboarding ads. Yeah, like, sure, for sure. sure. Skateboarding was paying the bills, I mean, for sure. Soltech was probably spending 40 grand a month. Wow. World Industry, or Dwindle, whatever you want to call it now, mm-hmm. I think that was our biggest advertising. They were spending over a million a year Damn. in print ads. Wow. They so had lot, They had a lot of companies. Yeah. yeah. And back covers, you know, that whole thing. Right. So there was all sorts of money going in. And, and, yeah, you had the New York people thinking that, well, we could sell it to whoever. Right. You know, and that's where the milks and all those come in. But they didn't come in at the same rate. Mm. Like, you know, a milk ad would cost twelve grand, where a skate ad would be half that. Sure. Oh, okay. Right. So that was good for all of us, you know, like it was... But they were, but they were cranking this. You know, this this wheel was going, mm-hmm. and so these marketing guys were just like, "How do we get in?" You know, from New York, they weren't even skaters. They didn't have anything to do with skating. So you, now you're seeing a bunch of other people like, "Where's my piece?" Oh, oh. God. Um, which sucked, but nobody was still telling us what we could put in the magazine or not put in the magazine. Mm. Which to me was like, well, if they're not doing that, then I don't care. Like I don't, I don't, I don't even pay attention to the ads other than the ones I like. So. So be it. You know, they're making a lot of money. They're happy. That's business. Um, then there was, a, I think, January of 2003, like 13 people got laid off. Not from skateboarding, but just in the building. You know, like, and these are a lot, like a lot of people that I'd worked with for 10 years, like from snowboarding, from uh, Transworld Surf, like mm. just different magazines that weren't doing well. Dude, just gone the wow. next day. Like, bam, out of here. And I was like, fuck, that's kind of fucked up. I, like, all of a sudden, you, you you know, those guys weren't doing anything wrong. It wasn't their fault. Right. But business is business, and they're just fucking gone. This could happen to me. Like, before that, I was like, this could never happen to me. Mm. I'm the guy. Yeah. Um. Seeing that, I was like, oh, my eyes are open. This is kind of, like, weird. Grant, are you going to talk about this magazine thing again? He's like, yeah, let's start a magazine. <laughs> okay. Uh, who do we need to talk to? And so there was an advertising guy that we had worked with for a long time named Mike Mahaley. And he was like, yeah, I'm down. We just need to find somebody that has money. <laughs> I'm like, who has money? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Tony Hawk has money. <laughs> yeah. And so Grant and I had, you know, we went and met with Tony Hawk and like his sister and like, yeah, we're going to do this magazine. And, you know, on paper, you look at it like million dollars an issue. You know, we're, we have all the facts of what this magazine could do. And he was like, he wanted to do it, but his sister's like, I don't think you should go that way. And, mm. you know, so we we're just asking for, a, a, I want to say a loan, but like to be a, a partner Investment, in the business. Yeah. yeah. And so he, I mean, it was kind of denied. And we we're like, oh, fuck. And so then Mike was like, well, I have this other friend that already does a magazine. He does a surf magazine. And it was called Water. And he's got a lot of money. I think he could maybe come in. He might be interested. And next thing you know, this guy gives us 500 grand. Okay. Good start. So, yeah. 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 You know, so. <laughs> We're not working in September, and we're not going to be able to produce a magazine till January or February. Mm. So we need to get paid. Oh you know, man! During that time, so we're you know that five hundred grand is what you know. Not that that's all we use, but like getting everything set up, getting an office, getting everything together, like making sure all is going. We went through that money pretty fast. You know, within you know by the middle of two thousand six, it was all gone. Damn. And, you know. And that was before we started getting money. So we had an issue out. Mm. 
probably in April of 2004. Okay. And, you know, that was sort of was profiting. So then, you know, then everything was going forward. But, yeah, that without, you know, somebody that had that, had to have that kind of money. Yeah, and it gets shit started. Right. Yeah. Because nobody wants to take less than their salary. Like, especially when when the economy was so good and the skate economy was really good. Like, you, you see what was going on. It's like, yeah, I don't want to get less money. Like, sure. Why would I start something to get less money? Right. Yeah. You know, in hindsight, like, it would be like, probably should have started with getting less money. Yeah. But Growing those business. first four years, so up to 2008, we made a lot of fucking money. Did. Oh, yeah. okay. It was a great magazine. Yeah. 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 Oh, when it came out, it was beautiful. Magazine. I mean, the image, I mean, just look, it was beautiful. Beautiful. And yeah. no, nobody bothered us. There was any, wasn't any corporate people saying we could have to do this or do that. It was like, it was all you guys. We can cuss. We can do whatever we want. Like kids in a candy store. How do you, you know? get distribution being a new well, magazine? Well, because, and again, well, then that's what everything was. Like all you had to do was call somebody and pay them some money. In mm. New York, like so, there's magazine distributors, and and I knew that because my ex-wife worked in circulation. Okay. So she would, was meeting with these kinds of people, and she ended up she worked for us. We hired her, and so there was a connection to these um, newsstand consultants, and so we hired them. Mm -hmm. And so they told us what we need to do, and we had to hire a printer and do all those you know grown-up things sure. that we weren't really used to, but we kind of were familiar with a little bit. Mm. And you know, it just became it, it became pretty easy, but you know the so the circulation grew until it you know just kind of stopped until the internet kind of mm. started taking over. Yeah, stuff. took over. Put How many on that. the what? It said put a hold on that. I know. <laughs> How many issues did uh, Skateboard Mag do? Is this pre barracks or after barracks? All the way, uh, 162, I think. All the way, 162. Oh, wow. That's right. You guys went to the barracks yeah. at the end of it. That's right. That was the restart. Yeah. Reboot. Reboot. Yeah, short lived. <laughs> you know what was cool? What Skateboard Mag did have, or like you guys were on the internet a lot, so I would always go to your guys' website. Mag Minutes and all Mag, that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. They were like, Mag Minute was a huge thing that you guys did. Thanks, Shad Lambert. <laughs> that was that his was, deal. That was <laughs> awesome. That was really cool. Yeah, and then again, like, so we're Mag guys, you know, Grant, me, even Atiba, whoever. We're all like, have been grown up in this whole print magazine thing. Like, that was number one. Like, we just never going to change. It's going to always be the same. Like, yeah. they're, everybody's going to want a magazine. They're going to need this. The internet, who knows what's going to happen there. You know, and we kind of denied that it existed. I mean, we knew it existed, and we looked at it, and we did, but we didn't deny that it could be a place where you could make money. Yeah. Right? Or you could, you know, sustain a business. So we didn't invest in it. You know, so every year, like, if there was, div like, profit in the magazine we would just take it mm -hmm. and just move forward you know it's never gonna end <laughs> <It's the smiles. laughs> it dropped quick after 2008 i mean it was just that was it right it was just the the money was advertising in magazines Changed. was was dropping and you guys uh, what did you guys sell to the barracks or something or how did that what, what we sold to the barracks in 2014 that was what happened okay um and it was, you know, it, it saved us at the time. Mm -hmm. But in hindsight, we probably just shouldn't have done it. We probably should have all taken less money. Right. And kind of, because my plan for the magazine, you know, I mean, in 2014, I wasn't like out in the streets every day. You know, I was doing a little bit, but like I was just managing people, you know, managing staff and like, okay, this is here. This is, you know, I didn't want to be out driving around like fucking sitting in a spot for four hours. Like. I like skating, but I don't. I don't want to have to be doing that if, and do this other shit. So, you know, that's when we start hiring like people like Matt Price, Bart Jones, like people that were younger. And I saw that those guys were going to be the future people. You know, taking my job, Ativa's, everybody's job. You know, like mm -hmm. they were going to be the valuable ones because they were more relevant in what kids wanted to see. You know, I mean, I'm way older than kids now. I mean, I know skateboarding. I know that what's good skateboarding and bad skateboarding. But I, I can't fucking be out there in the trenches. I just can't like write something about like, here, kids, check this out. Like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with this guy? You know, like, yeah. I knew that. But okay. we just didn't, we weren't able to get to that point before right. we had, you know, before the money was just gone. And, and, and again, nobody, you know, we had seven owners. Like, everybody had a little piece. Everybody had a different idea of what was going to happen. Mm. I'm, not taking a, I'm not taking a pay cut. You know, to the point where were people that weren't even really doing any work, I'm not taking less money. Right. Whoa. Mm. So it's the arguments kind of escalated 
through through mm-hmm. there that just some of those egos couldn't be deflated a little bit. I, I mean, I was guilty of it you know, as much as anybody. Like, I wasn't gonna take le- if dude wasn't taking less money, and this dude, like, I'm what not do me I either? Do? Like, I go every day. Like, I, my, I'm as important. Right. And yeah, that was not working. So when it, when I got the call from Steve Bear, I'm like, like, what do you guys think about selling the, uh, the barracks? And I was like, yeah, I love that magazine, man. That's the only I've only had one interview in a magazine. It was and that like, was there. I was there. It was your uh, wait, what do they call those things? New Jack. New Jack. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and that's what's funny about now. I mean, I, and I don't know. I can't speak for it as far as like how a skate career goes now. Mm-hmm. Like I have no idea. Like yeah, fuck, we're out there. But like when you think of kids and you think of the opportunities that used to be there when there was six magazines. Imagine. Oh like, yeah. It was like everybody had an opportunity. Like you didn't have to be the cool guy. You could be this guy. That you fit in in different places. Like you like. Yeah. fit in where you, you know, you sure. I feel like it in, was yeah. it was more blueprinted back then of like how to do a skate career. Like I could be like, oh, I need to get a new jack, I need to get, or check out new jack, video yeah. part, right, video but, part, transmittal part. You're 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 killing it, like you know, like if you wanted to be the top you know, top guy, yeah, right. But there was also, you know, you could be the big brother guy, you could be the slap guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. there was all these different yeah. places that there was like you know satori wheels guys or you know what i mean like all this shit yeah. that doesn't exist anymore as far as like on anybody's radar i think you yeah. know when you had all those magazines and all those different media places there was way more opportunity there was sure. yeah. yeah and for sure and you didn't have to wear some goofy hat <laughs> or you know what i mean like you didn't have to like change the way that you were yeah. as a person right like you yeah. could just be like this is what i'm wearing just plain blue yeah, mm-hmm. this is the way I market myself. You know, like the Heath thing. Like, he didn't have to do anything. To he didn't have to wear any logos or do fucking anything, and people knew who the fuck he was and who he rode for. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Now you have to fucking billboard that shit to where mm. you're like, dude, this fucking looks hokey. <laughs> no, not for not not for all brands. Well, no, I know, but you know, but I, mean, I know what you mean. I like, get, I or maybe it's do. not you, or, or yeah. you know, like like you all of a sudden come across as like, who is that? I thought oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> It's different. It's all right. Yeah, I mean, it's different. I'm, yeah. I'm the old guy now in the room. Like, so it's. I mean, not well, in this room, but I'm just saying, like, in general, like, where you look at, like, I'm glad or happy that I got to see. I don't know that the '90s history. You know baby. what I mean? Yeah. Like, you saw some of the best skateboarding going down F- ever. The golden era. You were yeah. right there, right, right in the. You were right seeing front. tricks being made up right in front of you. Right. Yeah. Much. Yeah. That must have been so cool to just like see it come into the office. Like, oh, oh yeah. my God, the sequence of cost, and this is insane. Like, our, our photo. Oh, I, like, eyes on it before anybody yeah. else. We would, yeah. we would look forward to people, like, when Humphreys would send a pa- like a FedEx box, you know, you get it in, it'd be on Grant's desk, like, ooh, here's the FedEx box from John Humphreys. You know, oh, he was out with sick. all the firm guys, you know, and you'd go yeah. and look through it, and you'd see all the slides, and, like, you know, you'd be down the light table looking at <laughs> yeah. it. And, wow. We gotta use this as the cover. The next cover, what do you think? And, like, everybody's like, yeah, or no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> not that one yeah or no <laughs> but like how yeah would that be just like a round yeah, who who wants who who's getting the cover this month like just talk around the room and see who had the what was the best photo or was I mean, it the end thing was mostly my choice at the end but like atiba had a lot of power in that zone you know as, as the years went by mm-hmm. so he would kind of be able to go out and shoot like i got an andrew cover you know man we just get that call. i got an andrew cover I mean, <laughs> call any for can you. i see it what is it Oh, I got an Andrew cover. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay. All right. <laughs> no big deal. I trust you. Definitely. But yeah. I want to see it still. And, yeah. But before that, you know, I mean, Ortiz and those, I mean, like, Ortiz would come in and he'd be there for like six hours, you know, like a book of photos like this big. Oh, like, damn. It would be an issue of 411 in photos, you know. Got like, you. Yeah. Pick through them. Okay, we'll use this. We'll use that. And like, you know. It was it was definitely always exciting to see the, all the different shit coming in from you know Ryan G from the East Coast like all of his stuff oh, you know, wow would come in and Pete Thompson stuff and you know, it was it was great to work with all those people yeah yeah because yeah. they were into it just because they were covering their scenes more or less you know what I mean like they didn't have to move to California they were able to do it where they were at yeah Jeff Landy like in mm, Sacramento like, yeah. Yeah, Jody Morris in Canada him. okay wow. Retta probably yeah this guy Wig in England yeah. And, Skin everywhere, wherever you wanted to be. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Not to mention yeah. all the ads that were coming in, too. You got to see the first ads, yeah. the girl ads, and the. That way, you know, they had a, like a little um, flat file in the advertising that we would go over. And, I mean, at least I, I knew I would go over and just to check, where was the new ads? Like, oh, yeah. Because sometimes it was to also know if we were like, if 
somebody was running a sequence of something that we were, you know what I mean? Oh, or if there was something that kind of like crossed over that, right. we, that we didn't really want to, or right. or maybe we better run this because you can't run it after the sequence. There's kind of something, like, right. Um, yeah. Was there a I'll schedule that the, the photographers had to send in photos? It just once a month, everybody had to send in some stuff. Like, you know, everybody had, there were always people working on something. Like, you know, G might be working on a BAM interview. Mm. Pete might be working at Woodward. You know, just they were yeah. they were doing things. You know, and I had to constantly be on the phone and knowing that they were actually doing stuff. Yeah. Just so I could, then you know, we'd make a board and like, and, and it would always change. Like if, oh, fucking Bob, so-and-so's interview's not done, we'd have to kind of come up with something else. But we had enough people that it was easy. So like, okay, the Matt Pales interview's going in there. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would yeah. just be like, we were saving this for this issue, but it's already done, so let's just fucking put it in. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah, it's crazy. That was, and that's how that those magazines, you know, to fill those things was kind of daunting. You know, you had Ooh. to have <laughs> ten guys on retainer taking photos all the time. Damn, funny four hundred, four fifty two. Yeah. I think the biggest one was four fifty six. Four fifty six. Yeah. It's like there's a, like a fucking book. Van Wilder ad in this one. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. it was so I didn't even realize that back then. But then, I don't know. Like, I always loved like the news sections in here. And then you got like the little interviews, like Atiba. It took a whole team, man. Yeah. Oh no, it's, yeah. it was a lot of work. I loved seeing work. this though. The what is it called again? The separations. Separations. It's pretty cool. I didn't realize that the. I mean, just. I wish I had one of the boards like with the actual type and all that stuff on them, but I didn't get to steal one of those. But I mean, like, look how like just this. The the evolution of it, yeah, of going from like the separations to the digital to I mean, just now it's everything's on a computer. You don't need anything. It totally got easy, and it doesn't mean that the photos are worse. It just means that like it's it's a lot easier to go out and shoot a photo and have the confidence to like, I got it. You know, like yeah. when you're out shooting film and you're like, fuck, did I get it? You yeah. know, I mean, trips to Europe, yeah, for oh. six weeks and you come back with like a backpack of film and you're like. Shh. I don't know. Because, oh, you know, again, that was one of my first trips was like in 1990. I went to Europe for six weeks. I would always hear about the extra so machines. That's, I think that's bullshit. You do. Because, yeah, I mean, we used 30, Yeah. Mm. I mean, I, we used a lot of 3200, which was the film that would get fucked up because mm-hmm. it was high, higher ASA. Nobody ever got their film fucked Nobody. up. Nobody. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it would happen like if it was like an infrared or something that was like a mm. lot more sensitive. But, mm. well, I, we, we had never had that experience that was a tall tale right. uh, i mean it, it could happen yeah. if it was like some fucking brrr. and again the film was pre 9 11 so maybe the x-ray machines now are no, earlier there you true. go there you go dude amazing i love it bro i mean you like we've just said you've covered the golden era of skateboarding okay. and beyond and before and been involved with all this i mean it's just fucking incredible bro you got to it witness really so much when i continue to i mean stuff out there and now it's you're just Mike from Pepsi. <laughs> you know, it's just, just, looking for, it's just, just looking for that new delivery. <laughs> get you, I'll get you on the route. It's amazing. <laughs> well, how many how many cases you guys need? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a Pepsi. I'm not a soda guy. Damn it. Yeah, not a soda guy. I'm a coffee, tea. Slowed down quite a bit with that. Gatorade guy. Eh, not even Gatorade so much, but I don't Gatorade's know. Gatorade's gnarly. But you're out there. Well, I'm not. You know, you're you're still out there doing it. You're out there still doing stuff, and it's amazing, in the mix. Bro. In the mix, I think we'll always be and in I, the mix. Yeah. You know. I mean, I like, I like. I do. You know. Again, I got laid off in 2016. Mm-hmm. I was devastated. Like, where's I go? What the fuck am I gonna do? You know, was sure. I gonna go through the post Del Mar depression again? Or okay. you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and you start searching. Like, like fuck. I mean, I was 50 three maybe when mm. you're laid off so 52 what do i do how do you right. how do you apply for a job like what the fuck like i've been in skateboarding for, since 1989 right now everything like if you want to get a job it's like you gotta fucking send go it, on linkedin know, yeah, or whatever, whatever. Yeah. yeah and i remember trying to get a job at vans as a uh, um like writing you know promo things or things for press releases oh yeah 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 and somebody tell me, like, sent me back, like, yeah, we talked to the team, and you're not a good fit. Uh, and I was just like, well, and then what so, team they talk to? Well, I mean, that's how people at corporations talk. Mm-hmm. Like, they got a team, okay. the marketing, the marketing team, <laughs> the or team whatever. Really, yeah, 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 yeah. whatever. <laughs> got but, a team. There's a better way to put that. And I was like, I'm not a good fit. How? Whatever. And didn't. I was just like, fuck. You know what? I'm probably never going to work full time again. Mm. But. 
you know, I started selling prints. And then, kind of, and then skateboarding kind of came back as far as like what people needed. Like I found my niche, which was you know I worked working for ProTech, which is you know shooting vert skating, like which I, where I started. Sick. There you go. Dope. Um, you know, so I just shoot sessions with vert guys, and so that they can use it all in their catalogs and vert or whatever. It's easy. Amazing. The Karyuma stuff. Mm. Going shooting somebody skating street and like shooting shoe shots of them out, out in the wild. That's easy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff for Tony Hawk. You know, like okay. going doing his events. Like, I don't need to do the other stuff, and it allows me to skate five days a week. Oh, you you're know, like, still yeah. out there yeah. ripping. Yeah. Uh, well, I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do what I can. Yeah, but, you're having but fun. That's why that's I enjoy it. it. That's, that's why I started, in, you know, that's why I'm here is because mm -hmm. I love to ride a skateboard. And it's good to be able to, you know, at 57, to be able to have that love and not be dealing with all the politics and all yeah, the stuff bro. that you know that was once part of my daily life yes. where i'm like i'm glad i don't deal with that shit anymore yeah right yeah. i mean the money was good but i'm not gonna Damn. as long as you're comfortable bro yeah exactly go, yeah. Dance, you know exactly it sounds like you got some good gigs going on yeah right they're now, good gigs too. yeah Fuck yeah man they're not a hundred dollars a day <laughs> they're what they're not a hundred dollars a day in the fucking ah hot sun dude. yeah, it's yeah a, that it's could a, get daunting for sure yeah. you could be working for coca-cola okay i would love to work for coca-cola oh you would okay. you would change in the not with that shirt on no <laughs> <laughs> it's gone um what's the website people can order prints off of uh dave swift photography.com dave swift photography.com we'll put the link in the description yeah, down below so out. people can go and buy some prints Thank you for bringing in the prints that you brought us. Right, right, right. Yeah, thank sure. you. That you brought. Yeah. I'm going to take home and not then, share then, with anybody because they're <laughs> I might want to. I might need to look in to get one of those Tom Penny prints, the front blunt. Even ah, though I Do you sell my, those? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny going, talking about the print stuff. Like, I've definitely throttled back since I've had got more work. Um, I mean, someday I'd like to do a book. Yes. You know, like, and yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. to just, you know, try to do a GoFund, whatever they call those things, a... Uh, you know, I don't want to, I want somebody to come to me and say, let's do a book. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, cause it's going to take a lot of my time, like to just sit and fucking make a book and make it right. It's a lot of time. But then a lot of the stuff that people want that buy in prints, it's like kind of my best stuff. You mm. know, like the heat stuff, like the Tom Penny's, I don't want to water it down. Mm. Like that's why I don't post a lot on my Instagram. Like a lot of, I mean, I do post like a couple times a month. Sure. And I, I don't. Lately, I don't even use those photos just because when if they ever do come out in a book form or something, it'd be like, wow, I haven't seen this in ages. Yeah. yeah. It's you know? so smart. Yeah. So, and it's less work for me. I hate going to the fucking post office. <laughs> so but, you can give them a little sprinkle here and there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you, uh, are you working or helping out Jamie Owens with his new magazine, Closer? I have something in the first one. Oh, oh sick. Nice. I mean, I, I'm, I'm down to like, I mean, that's, it's funny because I, like, for a, in between actually having a good gig, like these retainer gigs I just mentioned, I was like, fuck, I could just start a magazine. And Matt Price had started his thing. Mm. Um, and I was like, well, I can do that. If he can do it, I can do it. You know. And so I started looking into it. I had a logo made, and I was like, fuck, yeah. And then I was like, I don't want to do this by myself. Mm. Oh, okay. Like one of the biggest joys of making a magazine, you know, all those years at Transworld, even, and even at the Skateboard Mag, was working with people. Yeah. And I think those years were best at Transworld. You know, we had like, six or seven people and then all the photographers but the six or seven people i was around every single day and like how like we all were contributing to this thing mm -hmm. it wasn't all my thing yeah you know i have one view of skateboarding and this guy has not i had to try to kind of put that together yeah in something that people were like oh i'm stoked in this you know what i mean not everybody likes jeremy klein not everybody likes you know it's but if you have a great mix then it's, I think it's a winner. You know? Especially right. if you like working with those individuals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you all have the same passion. But if somebody yeah. else that's really passionate comes to me like, I don't like those guys. I like these guys, you know? Mm. And if, they, if they're approaching it right, like, yeah, there's room for your guys, too. Like, sure. And that's, yeah. I mean, even the skateboard man, that's what we wanted to do was like have, like Matt Price, I wasn't telling him he had to go and do this. He was like, hey, what do you think about this? You know, I was listening to his ideas, Bart Jones or whoever, of what they wanted to do. Right. And I was like, man, that'll work. Or this, maybe not. You know, I had to guide them too because they were young, but it's important that they're stoked on what they're doing. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You don't want to put them into this thing where like, you got to, you're, 
doing this. Well, they're, they're, they're like going to hate guy. their they're going to hate their job. Yeah, definitely. Or hate what they do. You don't want that. Bart Jones is one of the funniest dudes I've ever met in my yeah, life. He's, he's amazing. Hilarious human. Yeah. <laughs> Bart Jones, amazing. Well, it seems like you've worked with and keep continuing to work with just amazing people. Yeah, and really you're amazing too. Man, thank you so much for oh. coming on and sharing. Yeah, and yeah thank you for everything. DaveSwiftPhotography.com. Yeah. <laughs> go check it out. Go oh, buy some Honor to be make, here. I mean, make him go to the post office because he hates <laughs> it. Make him go to the post office. It was my life for like a while. Right? Yeah. That, that and selling skateboards. Selling skateboards? I just had a lot of skateboards. <laughs> oh, Roger oh, knows. He's gonna, oh, Roger oh, yeah, uh, I rated the collection. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got his, uh, just, well, it was like people would send product for product review. And right. It would end up in my office, and I would just, because, again, Grant didn't skate, like, and Mike didn't have any kids to skate, and, and I wasn't going to throw it away. Oh, yeah. so your your stores got big. Right. It would just, yeah. Like I, need a I still have all did. sorts of shit, but I, <laughs> but again, like I don't even try to sell it because it's like it's such a hassle to fucking deal it's with a people. A lot. Well, they want to know is so it many. Scratched? Is it yeah. the... like, dude, you're fucking kidding? Are you kidding me? <laughs> they want to know so many questions. <laughs> Just ride it. Yeah. Or yeah, that's a fucking scratch. It's 20 years old. Did you do a direct or did you do it through like eBay or whatever? Uh, I did eBay. Yeah. Which. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah, it is. It's a lot to deal with. <laughs> I do it as well. So I'm like, it's. I, I had to take a break. I'm like, I gotta chill. It's, it's a lot, funny. dude. It's it's a whole, it looks it's a like full time job. Yeah. The funny yeah, thing is. was, is all the stuff I wish I kept, which because it was super easy to sell, like a mm. Jeff Gro a Schmidt Sticks Grosso board, right, would sell for like two grand. Wow. But it was easy. I would I would rather sell twenty other boards, but they were a fucking nightmare to sell. Yeah. You know, at a hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. But I need money fucking no quick. <laughs> Uh, by Grosso. <laughs> Here's the board. Yeah. And now yeah. I'm like, fuck, I wish I still had that. Right. You know, yeah. or, you know, Chris Miller boards. And I'm like, I don't have a lot of that stuff. Do you have any Rodney Mullen boards? It's just fake ones. No. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> just the reissue <laughs> ones. I was going to say, because Don Brown sold that one for 25 grand. Uh, he was the guy? Yeah, he sold it yeah, to I someone. wasn't a big pal guy, but I mean, I had, a, I had the first Tommy Guerrero board. So the one before the Flames. Like, so it was just like the. Um, it was the the, the dagger, knife. yeah, knife, mm -hmm. but it was drawn by somebody else, like the, a different guy, not a pal artist, and they only had a few of them. But uh, I had I had one of those, and I think I sold that for two grand in like 2011. Wow, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. But now it's probably worth like eight grand. Eight yeah, grand. for yeah. sure. Crazy. Hey, <laughs> you never know. The market goes up, the market goes down. Yeah, you know. Same with Coke and Pepsi. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, can we uh, can, can we give you some nine club stuff to take home with of you? Course. Some mugs, a sweater. Kelly, we do the honors, bro. What size are we we looking XL. at? XL. XL. Thank you, bro. So hey, amazing, bro. Thank you that for yours. everything. Yes, but uh, Rogers, maybe. But I'm just thank you for everything you've done. Oh, yeah, the skateboarding and your photography. Your contribution has definitely been well respected through the industry. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I just love it. You know, I mean, skateboarding is. What I've done forever. Yeah. I mean, it was. It's funny to think that my parents were like, "You'll never be anything," and not in a mean way. Just like you got to go to. Yeah. And then when I, once I was at the point at Trans World where it was like it was like a career, they were like, "I'm so happy that you got to do what you wanted to do." And I think that's the thing that it's just important. You know, the kids. I mean, we want the best for our kids, right? Yeah. I don't have kids, but you know, I'm sure Jerron go to college, go to school, get a degree. You know, what I mean, like get a good job. Yeah. But is that going to make them happy? You know, you don't know. You don't I mean, know. Yeah. Let them do whatever they want. Listen, well, not I'm not, I'm not a parent. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let them do. Some guidance, I'm going to yeah. let them do whatever they want. That being yeah. said, it which is which is funny about that is that, you know, I always wish that one of my kids was, a, like, I don't know, a skater, but like somebody that I could skate with all the yeah. time. You know, and I have, I have a son that's 23, mm -hmm. and he skated with me for a while, but like then he just like went off and just played video games, where you know did other things, and then I have two step kids. They're still, you know, junior in high school and a freshman in high school. And they kind of skate. Mm. But, like, the one that's older, like, would skate with me all the time. Like, he'd go down to Poods and skate the bowl with me all the time. Oh, sick. And then all of a sudden he had a girlfriend and he'd... It stops. No, no. Went away. <laughs> <laughs> it went away. You know, it's just like... Uh, yeah. But... Yeah. I can't go, fuck you, you just skate, dummy. <laughs> you know, because, again, I also deal with those people, you know, the parent that's like... 
you got that kickflip. Like, whoa, dude, he don't got that kickflip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, Easy. what are you saying? Easy. He's trying to inspire him. Oh, like, hey, dude. man. Well, <laughs> listen. You're going to kill your damn kid. <laughs> I know. He's, trust me. Mr. Swift. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for coming on. by. Yeah, is this the stuff? I this get a is it. Yeti? We got a, we got the Yeti Woo! Nine wow. Club thermos there. Mm. Oh, it's beautiful, man. Beautiful. I drink out of one of these every night. Do you? That yes. water. Oh, I was going to say, what are, you, what are you mixing over there? Tequila. No. <laughs> What's a lot of tequila? <laughs> he's like, he go he's got to go to bed. <laughs> I mean, imagine that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Here's a, uh, a Nine Club hoodie for right you. Right on. We got a XL um, crew neck. Crew neck. I don't know why I can never remember the name of a crew neck, but I, I one time he called forget. it a crew neck hoodie. There you go. It, I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any shurzies? I got to keep the uh, <laughs> viewers on their toes. That's a new word <laughs> I heard. Got to keep the viewers on their toes. Mm -hmm. We had Jason Lee on the show recently. That. We have a. Uh, I got to break it out of the pack because I got to show you. We, so we redid the money shirt, blind video days mm -hmm. money, and then we made it updated. Bitcoin for oh, 2022. Wow. So we got both of those. Right What's the B for you? that people are going to ask me? Yeah. Bitcoin. Duh. Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin. Oh, Nine Club Big Belt. Stick. Sorry. There it is. So, <laughs> shout out Professor Schmidt, man. I would love to, I would have loved to know you back then. Um, <laughs> Big stick. What a great story. I love Here's that. Here's a Nine Club Belt for you. We did a collab with Grip Six. We got a Nine Club Belt. Beautiful belt. We we're all wearing them. I can't open it yeah, up. no, we'll open them later. I uh, love coffee. Mug. That'd be a good one. And air day, air day. Some stickers, sticker guy. Yeah. I have boxes of stickers. Do you? You probably sell those. Mark Are Waters you? one time. Well, this has been the nineties. You should sell stickers. I didn't really need to then, but I remember selling piles of stickers. Like I made fucking seven hundred dollars on fucking stickers. Yeah, really. But I, at Del Mar, I actually, you know, in the eighties, I would get kids to like sell like my. And I'd have stickers and like, hey, sell these, and, and you can have ten percent or whatever. I would give them mm -hmm. some. And that some of these guys I still skate with now, and they're like, "Remember when you used to give me stickers to sell?" And yeah. Like, yeah, we made some cash. <laughs> <laughs> so you made some cash. And I was like, "Yeah, well, yeah. you were just the middleman." Well, I'm yeah. sure you can make <laughs> cash off that now if they're like older ones that oh, like. Oh, I'm sure. Oh no, I, but I still have. I used to have like these books and like where I put the stickers in all the books. Mm. And, oh really? Yeah. Like archive. Then the books fell apart, so now they're just back in a box. But I, yeah, I have stickers from like the. 70s to now wow. that's amazing yeah. that's pretty cool uh, that's the nerd in me and yeah i just i mean i just love skateboards too like i mean even reissue whatever they are like like fuck this is like the same shape i just love this thing like, mm -hmm. i'll sleep with it no, i mean stickers is like somewhat of an art form if you look at it you know what i mean like i mean it is art but you don't see too many sticker like cool stickers these days i feel like yeah they lost their traction my generation was into sticker jobs like you know like that mm -hmm. was as important as the graphic like okay i put the stickers here which i still do yeah, yeah. Same. weird enough like my stickers like here like this pattern yeah people do that a lot on the top of their grip tape now yeah yeah i see a lot of people like the clear because they have clear grip tape oh so it's underneath the grip tape yeah and they could like sebo walker does like a lot of stuff like that um man i don't know there's a few people i but. can't do that you guys are black grip tape Oh, well, it's just, it, that takes so much time, mm -hmm. right? Did you guys ever run Rip Grip? Rip Grip? Yes. I did. Yeah, I did your own For sure. Know. I mean, I would do it for when I was, like, launch, like launching off ramps and shit. Cause what is that? Like, you put, like, where you would grab, like, I would do a method grab. There would be these soft little, like, you know, uh, for, your hand, for your hands. You know what I mean? It's like Astro Jack. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is go. Astro. But, there right. you go. But there was, like, this big moneymaker for NHS. Like, they would sell them. Shit, tons of. Like, when I worked at McGill's shop in eighty seven, eighty eight, people would come in like, but they're like five bucks a piece, you know. Yeah. People would just buy like ten pieces. Like it was insane the amount of you shit. Made that shit for like twenty cents. Yeah, it was cents. nothing. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so, but I always had some because again, my friend Mike rode for Santa Cruz, and so I would get stuff from him, and I've always had it, so I always put it on my boards because it went out when nose slides were like a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you can. Yeah, you, you can't know, do it then. Those sides. So yeah. it was gone. But recently I, I was, you know, just going through my scroll on Instagram and, it, you know, the ad pops up like, rip grip. Whoa. T you know, 10 pieces for 26 bucks. I'm like, fuck, I'm on it. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking went jammed in there, like made an order. And then next thing you know, I'm getting a text from some dude. Hey, Dave, you can come over anytime and grab whatever you want. I'm like, who the fuck? Who, who is this? Yeah. It's Pat from fucking Atlantic Skates. Like, I got a bunch of rip grip here. You, you know, just just come on over. I'm in Oceanside. 
And so I, you know, I went over and spent an hour with this dude. And like, and he told me that like his dad ran Atlantic Skates in, on the East Coast in the '80s and early '90s, and they had this pallet of fucking rip grip around '92, you know, that they could not sell. And the dad was just like, "Fucking get rid of it, just fucking throw it away," you know. And he's like, no, Dad, we got to keep that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got his pal, and he was just selling these things. And, you know, I mean, I would imagine that, you know, there's you would make good money selling mm. that shit. Just, just, this is original. It's like 30 years yeah, old. He's yeah. like, we're selling it. Yeah. yeah. Well, dude, all that old <laughs> stuff's coming back. Like, I mean. No, I mean, literally 30 years old. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it probably yeah, doesn't not, even. Not, not, it was not made no, like, this last year. <laughs> probably doesn't even grip. Yeah. Half of them, like the, that, like the tape the, won't the, stick to your yeah, board. Yeah, take, or you can't get the fucking backing off it. You're like, fuck. Blow dryer oh, until man. it comes off. But Amazing. I love that shit. That's so rad. I don't overdo one piece. Yeah? Yeah. One piece for sweepers. That's it? There you go. Yeah. Make it work. You didn't order more? No, no. I used one piece before. Oh, just one piece. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. He's trying to conserve it. Yeah. Well, that's just all you need. But back in the day when I, you know, you could, yeah, you can see it right there. You got some rip grip? Look on the top, my board. The cut, yeah, that's my Oh, yeah. Grip. There it is. That was there for like is. grabbing backside airs. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, because so the, the grip tape would just get the grip tape thumb. Fry your thumb. Yeah, shit up, bro. I was worried about and that, that was when a lot the softer. iPhone uh, fingerprint scanner would come out. <laughs> Fuck, it's not, no, I got grip tape thumb. <laughs> well, we're going places. Okay, I know. dude. Thank, thank you, you so much, much. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, dude. Thank you, Dave. Pleasure. It's been fun. Come back Big anytime time. and hang out with us. Uh, don't invite me because I might just come up. Okay. You're welcome anytime. I have a lot of free time. We'll be here. Long as okay, you look like yeah. Let's go get a beer sometime. You know, hey, yeah. the nine percenters. Let's yeah. do it. Hey, damn. Next time I'm in Venice with uh, Leandre, I'll fucking cruise by. There you Dude, go. Yeah, he's always there down the park. Yeah. Bad, bad One of those boy. dudes is late. We can go get some big sticks or something. Oh yeah, invite maybe the Paul Schmidt, Schmidt and me big stick party. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>